Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, January 23rd, 2023, the second day of the year of the rabbit. I am Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons participated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Hahn? Here. John Hurd? Here. Stephen Percy? Yes. Eric Helmets? Yes. Jim Feeney? Here. Doug Heim. Here. Ashley Meyer. Here. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a fully remote format consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022 signing the law on July 17th, 2022, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation until March 31st, 2023. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the NOVA's agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get done this evening. And next on the agenda is the proclamation honoring Dan Shine. And I'll now turn to my esteemed colleague, John Hurd, who deserves full credit for bringing forth this item. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Is Mr. Shine with us tonight on, on the Zoom? Ms. Meyer? Yes, I'm promoting him now to be a panelist. He should be joining as a panelist now. Yeah, we can see his name. There he is. Hello, Mr. Shine. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Hurd. All right. So this is a proclamation we put together. Um, so Mr. Shine, for those who don't know, was a 44 year coach at Arlington Catholic and he's been the AD there for I think 47 years if I remember from the proclamation. Um, he retired last year after his 44th season. Um, and last week on Monday, there was a game at the Arlington Brink and they unveil unveiled a, a shirt that's now hanging in the lobby at the Arlington Rink with the number 44 on it to signify his 44 years as well as the number of his most favorite player that ever played for him marcus moran no, just kidding. That, that, that was my number for anyone that didn't pick up on the joke um, so and then we, we, it was a nice event and we had a lot of alumni come back to honor his service followed by a few cocktails back at the Knights of Columbus. So it was good to see everybody. And he, I played for Mr. Shine. I coached for Mr. Shine for a little bit. But as many of you know, my father coached with Dan for about 30 years. Um, so they got an opportunity to relive some of the, uh, some of the stories that they were able to tell in a public setting last Monday. So, so it was a good event. So I did want to, I do have a proclamation that I put together just going through some of his many achievements, um, which I will read. And I, I should note, I, I almost, it was a surprise last Monday, which I didn't realize. So I almost screwed the whole event up by putting that on our, our last agenda. But I think I, I was able to come up with a story that covered my tracks a little bit. Uh, so with that, I will move to the proclamation. 
Whereas Dan Schein is a lifelong resident of Arlington, graduating, graduating from Arlington High School in 1973, being inducted into the Arlington High School Alumni Hall of Fame in 2002, and whereas Dan has served as the Arlington Catholic High School Athletic Director for 47 years, receiving the President's Award of Merit in 2020 to 2021 from the Massachusetts Secondary Schools Athletic Directors Association. And Dan was inducted into the Arlington Catholic High School Quarter Century Club for his distinguished service. And whereas Dan served as the Arlington Catholic Boys Varsity Ice Hockey Head Coach for 44 seasons, retiring at the end of the 2022 season with an overall record of 575 wins, 303 losses, and 83 ties. With Dan at the helm, AC won nine Catholic Central League championships and three state championships with the 1990 Division II title, the 1997 Super 8 title, and the 2010 Division I title. And whereas Dan was selected as Massachusetts Ice Hockey Coach of the Year in 1990, 1997, and 2010 by the Boston Globe, and the Massachusetts Ice Hockey Coach of the Year in 1990 and 1997 by the Boston Herald. And whereas Dan was inducted into the Massachusetts State Ice Hockey Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 2015 and has served on the Massachusetts State Ice Hockey Coaches Association Board of Directors since 1983, serving as president from 1990 to 1992. And whereas Dan has served on the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Ice Hockey Committee since 1979, serving as chairman since 1991 in the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Board of Directors since 2018. Dan was awarded the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Coach of the Year for 2021 to 2022 and was selected as the National Boys Ice Hockey Coach of the Year for the National Federation of State High School Associations. Now, therefore, it be resolved that we, the members of the select board, do hereby honor and recognize Dan for his many years of service in his distinguished coaching career at Arlington Catholic High School and proclaim January 23rd, 2023, Dan Shine Day in the town of Arlington. And just as a personal note, is, you know, I grew up as the water boy for many years in Arlington. So I, I, I got to see Dan at his best and I played for him and I coached for him. And one thing I had mentioned last week when I spoke is that what sometimes that separates Dan, I think, from a lot of coaches that you see out there is he doesn't just care about how you do on the ice. He doesn't care about how you do for the team that he coaches if you're a player for Dan Shine, he helps make you a better person. He talks to you about what you're going to do after high school, where you want to go. He'll make a call if he can help you in any way to help you get on the path you want to be on. And he's really a lifelong resource. Anybody that ever played for him or really has known him can call him 30 years later and he'll pick up the phone right away. He'll talk to them and he'll help in any way he can. So it's a lifelong relationship playing for Dan, and it really has been an honor to know him as a kid, as a player, and now as an adult. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurt. I mean, so, so we we have the motion on the proclamation. You um, know, are we going to get a second or any other comments, Mr. Corsi? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'll second the motion, and uh, I, I want to congratulate Dan on on an outstanding career and, and for his dedication to, to to Arlington Catholic and and to the community. And, and one thing that Mr. Hurd uh, read there that, that that I always found to be a remarkable achievement was the the 1997 Super Eight Championship uh, that you won. And for those members of the public, that that Super Eight tournament had started in 1991. And for the first five or six years, it was dominated by Catholic Memorial and BC High. And, and Dan and his Arlington Catholic team 
won it in, in, in 1997, beating BC High, the defending champion uh, that year. So uh, just a remarkable accomplishment. And, and it, as we look at the proclamation, you won a, a state championship in Division One, in Division Two, and in the Super 8. I, I've known you for a long time, Dan, and, and, and this is a, a well-deserved honor. And, and I want to congratulate you on that outstanding career and, and wish you all the best in retirement. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Mahan? Sorry about that. Uh, sorry, Coach Shine. I'm, I'm going between the laptop and the phone, so <laughs> don't take my pointing as anything, but I'm trying to unmute myself. Um, first, congratulations. Uh, I think my colleagues, Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Hart said it best in terms of, um, <clears throat> yes, you're, you're a coach, but um, you uh, embody the, the best part of the coach, which is uh, getting well-rounded players and helping them in, into adulthood. And uh, as many of you know, I <clears throat> coached at Arlington High. And one of the things that um, I was really impressed by and could tell you with Coach Shine's um, sincerity was with the two high schools we have in, here in Arlington, um, really fostering um, a partnership uh, or camaraderie between Arlington Catholic High School and Arlington High School. Um, and I know Coach Shine um, has helped lots of Arlington kids um, who didn't necessarily go to Arlington Catholic High School. Um, sometimes it was just a word of advice in the field when the two high schools met, but other times it was, as Mr. Hurd spoke about, um, thinking about the big picture and long range and uh, helping them to, to the next step forward. So. I can't believe you're retired, Coach Shine. I, uh, you're really synonymous with uh, not only Arlington Catholic, but the town of Arlington. Um, I, I really want to tell you I treasured the very limited opportunity I had to work with you um, as a coach at Arlington High School, but also um, helping me uh, sort of uh, partner with um, the Arlington Catholic High School cheerleaders. Uh, and we really had a good program going between the two and, and good camaraderie ship. And uh, that couldn't have happened if you weren't at the helm of that, really uh, encouraging that and making sure it, it continued on. So I wish you good health <laughs> um, and, and your family uh, moving forward. Uh, and I know we'll, we'll see you again soon. So thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Thomas. Thank you. I can't say it any better, so I won't try. But Coach Shine, congratulations on an exceptional career. Thank you for your years of service to the young people of Arlington. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, and Mr. Shine, you know, it is hard to follow up on everything everyone has said, especially me given the, the history that they're referring to is way before my time in Arlington and me, but mm -hmm. but certainly hearing their praise me makes me me. Um, realize that you are a great um, asset, I mean, to to the town and 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 just humanity in in general. I mean, and I think it says a lot for Arlington Catholic, I mean, that you stayed um, with them for as long as you did, and it's good to have I me mean, great institutions of all kinds here in town. So so thank you very much, I mean, um, and so um, before oh, Mr. Feeney. Hi, Mr. Shine. Uh, as a former. Arlington Catholic student athlete who benefited from your uh, leadership and dedication. I just wanted also to chime in and say, congratulations on your illustrious career. You'll be missed. Thank you very much, Mr. Feeney. Yeah, so um, before we take the vote, would you like to say a few words, Mr. Shine? Yes, I would, thank you. I'm, I'm humbled by this honor, uh, <clears throat> very exciting. Uh, uh, as John heard noted that, uh, he started out with us as a stick boy and um, running around the rink as a little six, six, five, six, seven year old. And now uh, I'm so proud of his accomplishments as a, as a select board member and also as a, an attorney and, and a, a husband and a dad. <clears throat> and the same uh, with Mr. Feeney as well, uh, another racy uh, alum we're so proud of. But you know, 
John mentioned his dad, uh, Jack, uh, coached with me for almost just about 30 years and, and another lifelong resident, Joe Keefe, uh, who many of you know, I'm sure, uh, 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 Jim Hunt, uh, another Arlington resident for many years. He's now living in Burlington, but he's with us for um, so many years. And, and John Donato, who started out as a stick boy and moved his way up uh, as well with the program. Uh, it's taken many, many people to help me through this journey. Uh, I've always enjoyed uh, working with the kids in Arlington, uh, both AC students as well as the high school students. And um, I feel that uh, we've made a, a, an, an excellent contribution to the community. And I've, all, I've always felt that oh, we've had two great schools in town and try to promote both of them as much as we possibly can and promote the student athletes as well. My family, I've had uh, a bunch of nieces and nephews that have been on the journey with me uh, from the time they were little tykes running around the rink. Now, a uh, couple of them getting married uh, this, this spring. Uh, and of course, my wife, Terry, who I couldn't have done it without her support. Uh, I think everyone knows coaching is a, a challenging job these days as teaching. And um, it takes um, many hours of the week out of your personal life. But it, it's, it, I feel it's been something very worthwhile to me, my wife, Terry, and our family. And uh, I want to thank the, the board for honoring me tonight. Uh, I'm humbled by this. Um, and actually, I, I feel speechless because I, 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 think, I think so much of the community and what Arlington stands for and, and the people that run the, run the town, um, I'm, so, I'm so proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So on a motion to issue this proclamation by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Heim. Yes. 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 Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan, my apologies. Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. I mean, for a while, everyone was hearing you but me. And now I still hear you very softly. So I think it's on my end. So I'll, I'll figure it out for him next vote. Well, thank you again, Mr. Shine. Good luck with them. And, um, thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Right, Very much appreciated. Good night. Thank yeah. you, Coach. Have a great meeting. Thank you. So we move on to the third item on the agenda, the Arlington Education Foundation 5K race on May 21st this year, 2023. We have Ms. Fuller in. I mean, and so um, we were looking for some confirmation from APD, mean that uh, they were fine. Um, with the race, we've gotten a letter I mean, uh, from Officer Toe and then a follow-up letter uh, regarding the tale um, this afternoon. I mean, so um, I'll turn to you, Ms. Fuller, in case you want to say anything, and then I'll turn to my colleague, Mr. Helmets, find out um, any thoughts from him, and we'll see where we go from there. Ms. Fuller? Perfect. Um, again, my name is Laura Fuller. I'm with the Arlington Education Foundation. I thank you for your time this evening. Um, uh, last uh, two weeks ago, you asked for some confirmation and uh, Ms. Mayor from the Select Board Office uh, wrote to both uh, Joe Conley and uh, Officer Rateau at the Arlington Police Department. Um, we, I had been in touch with them, I just didn't have the written documentation. So they are, uh, all seem to be okay. Um, Officer Rateau and I had a little back and forth. He was encouraging us to use the new path on the reservoir for the race. Um, and when I talked to Mr. Conley about that uh, before last week, uh, Mr. Conley was a little concerned that 800 people would um, create undue wear and tear if we were pushing all 5K races to the reservoir. Um, last year, we held the race on a Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and didn't really have an issue with traffic or the safety of the number of children in the race. Um, so uh, we, and we are also concerned uh, using the reservoir, we would need to actually hold four races uh, 
after one after each other, one at eight o'clock, one at nine o'clock, one at 10 o'clock, because the space on the reservoir just doesn't have that, uh, can't allow 800 participants all at once. So we kind of changed the community feel of the event. So um, Mr. Conley is okay with us using uh, Herd Field and um, not Herd Field, excuse me, um, Hills Hill and the bike path. And, um, and so we just need to make sure that a police detail is in place in enough time to direct traffic should we need it and, um, and to keep cyclists off the bike path. Um, based on our experience last year, our, our biggest issue was cyclists on the bike path. Um, as well as um, just keeping uh, stopping traffic on um, crossing the Mill Street crossing of the bike path. Um, so if we can get support for that, um, which we are working with the police department to make sure that that is in place, uh, we should be fine. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Helmuth, as a courtesy. In our Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Feeney, our deputy town manager, uh, if he has any comments, I know that I asked him earlier today to check in with with um, AP, the police department and recreation department. Do you have any uh, recommendations for us? Uh, I'm very happy to move approval here in a moment. But do you have any recommendations about conditions that we that the town would prefer us to to place on the approval? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Helmuth. Uh, I wouldn't say that we have any additional conditions that we want to place uh, on the race this year. I think that as further correspondence that was provided from uh, Sergeant Martin showed that we're proposing a three plus one detail alignment this year, meaning three officers and a supervisor, so we can uh, better spread out the coverage and provide additional support during uh, setup and operation as they will be traversing some high traffic intersections. So uh, I believe that will hopefully help address any issues that may have been experienced in the past. And I know that uh, Laura has taken steps to prepare for proper disposition of uh, recycling and uh, has been in touch with Charlotte Milan on that. So uh, from the operational perspective, I'd say we're good to go. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Feeney. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Fuller, for your patience and for putting this wonderful event together. Um, are you comfortable with the recommended uh, police detail in terms of being able to uh, to work that into your plan? Yes, I, 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 that would be perfect. Um, and we are looking forward to working with the police department on that. Um, I know Mr. Martin suggested a half hour before the race, and we are going to meet with him and Officer Rateau, hopefully within the next month, and maybe make that an hour before the race, just to make sure that we're all set. Um, but yes, that will be fine. Four people is fine. And, and just one final question. I noticed that the, the application still has the police detail box not checked. Should we assume in our motion that for the purposes of this approval that that box uh, would be checked on the application given given the uh, commitments? Yes, Mr. Helmuth, of course. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'd therefore like to move approval uh, just with the condition uh, that police detail and um, any, any other operational requests by the town be uh, complied with. Thank you, Mr. Herb. Mr. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I will second that, and I just want to pass along that uh, Scott Smith, who I think is still a member of AVAC, Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, um, made the suggestion that Ms. Fuller or someone from the AEF may want to reach out to Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, perhaps for some, um, not just coordination, but uh, uh, some efforts to uh, work on keeping everybody safe and um, also what you reference about uh, the bicyclists during the race. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome, Ms. Mahan. And so, yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, I think their meetings are on the third um, Wednesdays of the month, but you can find that on the town calendar. You know, so <clears throat> um, any other comments, questions? Okay, and so on a motion by Mr. Helmes, I mean, to, um, approve I mean, of the um, Arlington Education Foundation 5K race on May 21st um, with conditions regarding um, the police tale. And second, by uh, Ms. Mahan, Mr. Mr. Heim. Heard? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. 
Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's your unanimous vote. Thank you. Thanks for, um, for putting this together. I mean, uh, man, it's a good cause. And who knows how big it's going to be next year. Huh? <laughs> so, so, all right. Take care. And, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Welcome. And, uh, so, moving along, and, uh, we are on, I, well, we're on the consent agenda, which has items four and five. I mean, first item Black History Month banners by Crystal and Ayn from the Arlington Human Rights a human Arlington Human Rights Commissioner, and, um, and second is a request special one day beer and wine license on January 28th, 2023 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Uh, so I imagine we can just move forward um, with getting the motion in a second. Move approval. Um, a motion by Mr. Mr. Corsi, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I will second that, and I also see that we had an addendum for consent agenda with uh, four reappointments. Are we incorporating that in with the other two on the consent agenda? So it would be the Black History Month banners, the request for a one-day beer and wine license, as well as the four reappointments to Commission on Arts and Culture, Redevelopment Board, Open Space Committee, and Park and Rec Commission. Mrs. Mahan, as, as my very helpful vice chair, you are really doing your job. So thank you me, for, for, uh, for bringing that back to my attention. You know? And so, yes, let's please do you know, include that. So I'll circle back to Mr. Helmuth on that motion. Oh yeah, is actually, Mr. Chair is actually Mr. DeCourcy on the, on the motion. I'll, I'll, I'll amend, my, yeah. I'll amend okay. my motion to, to include the additional appointments. All right, thank you. And I'll still second it, Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you. And uh, so, so um, any other comments, questions? All righty. So on a motion to approve the extended consent agenda made uh, by Mr. Corsi and a second um, by Mrs. Mahan, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. And so now we're moving on to item number six, the appointments and, uh, to the Human Rights Commission. Term to expire on June 30th, 2025. Uh, Kevin Bryant. And, yes. and I see the pronouns he, him. So, Mr. Bryant, and uh, for that title, any of the title, just let me know, okay? Uh, Kevin Bryant's fine. Thank you. Uh, so, um, uh, do you want to tell us a few things about yourself? I mean, um, why you want to be an HR? Uh, well, I'm a retired uh, law enforcement uh, police officer, 37 years. Um, I am a affiliated Baptist minister at Memorial Church at Harvard University. I am also a Harvard University chaplain. Uh, I'm also the chaplain for the Newton, Arlington, and Harvard University Police Departments. Um, I am also a recovery coach. Um, Father of six, five young men and one woman. Uh, I've uh, been studying martial arts for 55 years. I'm one of Rocky DeRico's highest ranking black belts, which is on Park Ave there at Kempo Karate. Um, I have a great time traveling with my wife and I sing in a band and there is no greater service than service to others. So that is why it's a blessing and uh, a great responsibility. I look forward to becoming a member of this panel. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Uh, so I turn to my colleagues. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I very gratefully uh, move approval on Mr. Bryant's nomination. Mr. Bryant, thank you for your service to the community in so many ways. We are very fortunate to have you as a member of the community in Arlington, and now particularly in this really important role, you bring a, a wealth of uh, amazing experience. I'm just looking at your resume. It's, it's just astonishing in its diversity and breadth. And uh, I, you're never bored, I can tell that. And uh, you will, I think that you'll have a great time engaging with the other really interested and interesting people on, on the commission. And uh, you know, I feel really good that you'll be among the people who are safeguarding the dignity and rights of our of our people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Ms. Mahan. 
I, I will gladly second that. And I, I do want to say to Mr. Bryan, thank you so much for um, going through your resume, your curriculum vitae, your everything. Um, thank the Lord you actually have time to uh, <laughs> commit to yet another thing along with your better half. Um, as a Baptist myself here in Arlington, uh, First Baptist Church, Deacon, um, I, I definitely uh, appreciate um, not only your commitment to interfaith and, and, and worship, as well as your law enforcement background, but, but especially on that in uh, Andover Newton Theological. Uh, I have, myself have uh, attended over there. I am not a pastor or, or anything like that, but um, I do know um, sort of pastoring uh, to worshipers is going to be a great asset for you. Not only is serving in your role as a commissioner on the Human Rights Commission with the uh, people that come before you sometimes in really stressful times and times that they really haven't faced before and, and, and maybe a little intimidated or fearful with that, um, but also with your fellow members, um, sort of a, a, a different route um, and, and as they have their strengths also. I'm not, I'm not saying that they don't, but um, you have a, a wealth, a realm, a breadth, all the TH words of experience. Um, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the Human Rights Commission, and I look forward to when uh, the weather gets better and Tripoli, West Nile, coronavirus, RSV, and the flu <laughs> settle down for a little while. I, I can't wait to meet you in person, sir, and thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for your kindness. Any other comments from my colleagues? I can't find the raised hand function on my phone. Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I saw you, Pete, uh, and you can, you can just jump in. Okay, so Mr. Hurd. Yeah, it, I just want to, again, thank you for your willingness to step up, your, the breadth of your, your knowledge in so many different areas is really incredible. And in, in this, for this particular committee, I think that would be very beneficial. Um, we rely on this committee a lot and it, it is time intensive and labor intensive, but your uh, willingness to serve is really humbling and uh, we appreciate having you on the board. So I look forward to working with you. Thank you, I look forward to working with you, John. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also wanna echo the comments of my colleagues and, and thank you, Mr. Bryant, for your willingness to serve on the Human Rights Commission and, and the experience that, that, that you will bring to the to, to the commission and for your dedication. Um, so thank you very much and look forward to working with you too. Looking forward to working with you, Mr. Corsi. And so, I mean, all I can say is, wow. I mean, <laughs> actually, I can say more, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I will. It's like, you know, I, I've never seen such a massive name drop. You know, I feel like we one degree closer to uh, a whole bunch of people that I never would imagine I feel one degree closer to, you know, and, and all I'll say is that the, I'm going to um, run your um, CV by the members of the Rainbow Commission, and I'm the liaison from the select board to that commission, and they are going to be jealous that HRC uh, got you. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you appreciate diversity me, on a whole nother level, I mean, uh, from what I see in that paragraph, because because there are elements in there that, um, wow, just wow. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you very much I mean, uh, for uh, for um, signing up to HRC. I, I've, I've, I've listened to a number of, of HRC meetings, not as many as I want to, because it conflicts with some um, other other meetings, you know, but it's really an important group and they do um, really good and hard work, I mean, so so uh, you'll be a great asset you know, and, and you'll find a great bunch of people um, to work with. So once again, thank you. And on a motion to accept um, um, Kevin Bryant's um, membership on the HRC by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Mahan. Mr. Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay, thank you all. So, so moving on to item number seven, Port Ariat of Arlington, time to, time, sorry, excuse me, term to expire on January 31st, 2026. Uh, Gene Flanagan. Um, 
Ms. Flanagan, I mean, um, any title you want, just let me know. Happy to call you that. Call me Jean. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jean. And uh, so, uh, want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, I've been a resident of Arlington for 47 years, and I've been writing poetry most of my life. I went to Northeastern um, at night, and um, I've been teaching for the last 20, 20 years at Middlesex Community College. Great. Thank you very much. You know, so I turn to my colleagues. Ms. Mahan. Sorry about that, Ms. Flanagan, Jean. <laughs> I'm using laptop and phone, and I'm like, am I muted? Am I not muted? I'd uh, first like to move approval, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I want to thank you for also submitting uh, just a little snippet, six pieces um, of, of your poems, your poetry that, that you've written. Um, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative that you're going to be the Poet Laureate. Uh, it's uh, position that when it was first introduced, I listened very carefully to my colleague, Joe Kiro at the time, and didn't really grasp exactly what it was, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, it sounded a good idea, but I certainly have grown to uh, appreciate, um, I, I have uh, heard of you um, in Arlington in, in, in uh, various capacities. So you'll be the second poet laureate of I think the four that we've had. Um, Marion Levine was also someone yes. I was familiar with. So um, it could be Levine, am I saying it wrong? I think she says Levine. But anyways, um, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, uh, not only fostering what you can in terms of your writings um, to the town, but um, any other sort of bridges, the poet la laureate, um, I believe there is one already with our libraries, which I think should definitely continue. But having been in a resident in the town for so many years, I know you'll be able to make this position your own and probably grow it in a way that I wish I could make a suggestion to you, but I, I don't have the expertise to do that. So I'm going to leave that to you. So I want to thank you, um, for, thank you. For, for volunteering to do this. I say to a lot of people, we have people on these boards and commissions that, um, I'm almost embarrassed. I want to apologize because you're not receiving any monetary compensation, not that you do it for that reason. I don't know if we could afford you, but um, <laughs> but thank, thank you again for uh, agreeing to do this. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Ms. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion and uh, also want to thank Ms. Flanagan for uh, her willingness um, to, to serve as a poet lawyer and for providing your poetry, but also providing what you'd like to do as poet laureate. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was the uh, exploring nature through our parks. And uh, I, I can think of uh, a few better places and to, to, to have poetry readings at Menominee Rocks Park and uh, among the others there. But I, I, I see you see that as a place to write new poems, but also have poetry readings. So that sounds uh, very exciting. And, and thank you for providing your vision to us as, as part of the materials that you forwarded. Thank you. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you for stepping up to this role. Uh, I know it, it is a fair amount of work that you have to put in, but and so you have to love it to do it, but you've, you're following the footsteps of some quite animated poets. So but I do look forward to working with you as well. I think the town, the various poetry events, I'll call them, that the town has. A lot of people look forward to like the haikus on the bike path or the poetry on the, the storefronts that I, I know I see it in the Heights. I know people like to stop and take a gander and read and we don't always come across poetry in our everyday life, but um, it's to put it out there and have poetry readings. I know that we've had poetry readings in the center um, at Uncle Sam Plaza. It's, it's something to look forward to, and it's, it's a way for people who love poetry, poetry and people who may not identify as someone that loves poetry to come up together and hear some good poetry. And uh, I, again, look forward to working with you, and thank, thank you for you. your willingness to serve. Thank you. So, Mr. Thomas? 
Thank you. Thank you, Gene, for, for willing to do this. Thank you for your for your work. Uh, I enjoy these poems and I, I, I love the range uh, of style and expressivity. Uh, I, for some reason, I'm particularly drawn to clap your hands and dance because of its energy, its brevity, its direction. Um, it just sings to me. And so much of your work does, but so much of it is, is also poignant and thoughtful. Um, so this is a well-deserved post. I'm excited about the plans that you have for it. I, I love, as, as Len said, the, or, or uh, John said, the community has really uh, aw awakened to the power of the spoken word to poetry. I think that uh, the leadership of, of the AC and AC, AC and other leaders have um, really cultivated a love for poetry in the town. So you're stepping into fertile ground. And um, I look forward to seeing what you help to uh, encourage to grow and bloom. Thank you. And I agree with my colleague, Mr. Corsi. It's really good to see what you're thinking about doing. And just remember, there's some nice parks out in the east, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and uh, we like poetry too. And there are a lot of others out here, uh, yeah. too, you know. And, and I think I think my colleague. Well, first off, I have a, a, a question. Am I recognizing your poetry is primarily free verse? Yes, mostly. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the structure. It's, I like the way you shape the you shape the visually shape the poems. I mean, so it has that visual aspect to it. So, so I think my colleagues all know what's coming. I mean, and 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 it's it's seventeen syllables in a five <laughs> seven five arrangement. <laughs> Poet laureate, <laughs> joyfully we welcome you. Words become great art. And so with that on uh, a motion uh, by Mrs. Mahan uh, and to, to appoint you as Port Laureate and a second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Hahn. Mr. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, and thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. We're so close to a haiku there somewhere. We're gonna make it work <laughs> in a roll call vote at some point. <laughs> I look forward to that, Mr. So. It's a unanimous vote. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So now I need to scroll back over to Windows. Well, take me. There we go. Open forum. Hey, so except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. And so Ms. Meyer, what do we have? It looks like we have one hand raised at this time. Okay. I'll be promoting them and sharing my screen for the timer. Great, thank you. Oh, maybe two hands now. <laughs> okay. And who do we have? Um, Mr. Ward, Steve Ward. Unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Diggins. Thank My you. name is Stephen Ward. I'm a five-year uh, resident of the Arlington Housing Authority. And my uh, uh, I have a written presentation. It's about a page and a half. But I've also sub uh, submitted it to the select board office in hopes that it would be uh, uh, something that you would all consider at the next meeting uh, of, the, of the board in an official capacity. Because what I'm trying to do is petitioning the select board's uh, endorsement uh, of a consideration for the uh, 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 issues surrounding the candidate selection for the tenant member of the board of directors at the Arlington Housing Authority, which the most recent one, you all selected a young lady by the name of Fiorella Badia. Um, the problem, of course, is that the governor has never spelled out in the law exactly how they are supposed. We are supposed to uh, um, uh, muster up the candidates, which means that the board could have as many as 
50 candidates showing up. And this needs to be corrected by um, uh, Senator Frieden and uh, Mr. Gar uh, Representative Garbali. And um, all the information I have sent earlier to Chairman Diggins uh, uh, that concerns most of it, I have left the, uh, uh, the, the detail that I want to really present to you tonight um, with the uh, select board's office and um, hoping that they, they, uh, that they will take it and submit it to all of you for your uh, perusal. This is an important issue because the Arlington Housing Authority represents over $57 million in, in taxpayer property. And it's a four and a half million dollar operation that very few people have any idea of what's happening there. Very few people understand this quasi governmental agency that the town in its generosity of uh, exempting a tax uh, as a uh, made it tax exempt is foregoing more than half a million dollars in taxes every year for this place. And it, it we, what we need to have is a, a, a equitable and democratic selection process for the candidate for the board of directors for your appointal, which is coming up in another year and a half. So there's a limited amount of time, both for us to uh, uh, address this and for me to continue speaking. If you would like to hear my presentation that I've written up, uh, just tell me so, and it'll, I don't know how, it's a page and a half here uh, to the whiteboard that I've, I've, I've typed up. So, no, we, we will read it. We're out of time. You know, I mean, maybe um, if you want to come back next week and you can do it in three three minutes, you can. But um, um, I, I will I will contact staff. You know, and and we'll we'll take it up next time. So thank you very much for your time tonight. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, next person. Can you just tell me who it is, Ms. Meyer? Yes, it's Kristen Anderson. Hi. Okay. Sanderson, you ready to go? Yes, hi. Um, thank you, Select Board, um, Town Manager, and Town Camp Council for all your good work. Uh, my name is Kristen Anderson. I run a business in the industrial zone in the Heights. I have been in touch with a number of other Arlington businesses located in the industrial zone, and we are concerned about a warrant article that the Redevelopment Board is voting on this evening. We would be at the ARB meeting tonight except um, that the ARB will be voting on this warrant article before taking any public comment. Um, the name of the proposed article is ARB Jurisdiction Over Industrial District. Um, I've reached out to uh, Town Council uh, Doug Heim for clarification about this article and um, I hope to hear back uh, about it. Our concern about this warrant article is that um, it may allow the ARB to change the use in the industrial zone to residential. And we worry that existing and future businesses will not be able to compete with uh, residential market rates and businesses will be pushed out of town. Um, Arlington needs more businesses, not fewer. Local businesses provide jobs. Local businesses provide services and products to Arlington residents. Um, and local businesses provide a commercial tax base to the town. Local businesses play an important role in the community, making for more vibrant and walkable neighborhoods. Um, and so we ask you to consult with town council to determine whether this proposed bylaw would allow the ARB to change the use in the industrial zone to residential. And if it does, please support the town's existing and future businesses by voting no action on this warrant article when it is brought before the select board. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. You're welcome. Have a good night. And so that will be it for open forum. Uh, we'll have a second opportunity for people who uh, stay around and have, maybe have something to say towards the end of the meeting. And moving on to traffic rules and order. Other business, item number eight, recommendation from the Transportation Advisory Commission. And um, we have, um, I see Ms. Swan in the um, room. So, hi, Ms. Swan. Thanks for joining us. It, uh, 
and you're gonna you're gonna present this recommendation much better than I could. So it's all yours. Hello, I'm Laura Swan, and I am the chair of um, the Transportation Advisory Committee. And um, we voted this December to recommend some improvements by a crosswalk at Summer Street and Victoria Road, which is right across from Buzzle Field. It's a heavily used crosswalk by a lot of um, families and people trying to access the field and get to the Minuteman Bikeway. Um, this particular crosswalk has come before TAC before, and there was a restriction in the amount of parking in front of the field, basically about 40 feet. Um, but there has been sort of a, a continuing um, complaints from the residents. Um, people often park in the new parking zone. And we took another look at this and came up with some, of, some more, um, I'd say intensive recommendations of um, restricting parking um, even farther in order to create a safe stopping distance for cars approaching this crosswalk, as well as installing a rectangular rapid flashing beacon with a paired beacon ahead that will um, let cars know when people are trying to use this crosswalk and that the beacon is activated. And um, in order to sort of really enforce this um, these no parking zones, we're going to recommend putting something like flex posts um, and perhaps like striping or um, in other ways, painting the pavement in order to um, really indicate to parkers that they should not um, park right up next to the crosswalk and that this way people will be able to see the cars coming and be able to safely cross and cars will be able to identify when pedestrians are at the curb ready to cross at this crosswalk. Um, I will say that there is a um, plan for the Mystic River Bikeway to connect to the Minuteman around here at Buzzle Field. And this means that in the near future, um, probably still several years out, the location of this crosswalk may shift um, possibly to the other side of Victoria Street and so another more intensive options like doing a sidewalk bump out just um, don't really seem appropriate at this time until we know for sure what that connection is going to look like. Um, yeah, so please let me know if you have any questions. Oh, I should add that um, as part of this sort of restricting parking, there will be five additional spots, parking spaces mostly on the south side along the field that will be um, marked as no parking. So there will be a little bit of, I would say, loss of parking alongside the field, but hopefully this will make it safer for people trying to cross and get to the field. Thank you, Ms. Juan. And so I turn to my colleagues, questions, um, Ms. Mahan. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Ms. Swan. And please pass on my, my colleagues' thanks um, to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Just the de detailed report uh, in terms of A, identifying current situation, as well as um, coming up with some recommendations. And I appreciate you're also thinking even longer term in terms of the possible connection. Um, I don't know if I call it the trail, the bikeway. <laughs> it's known by many names and used by many people in di di different forms of traveling. So um, I definitely would uh, move approval. I just wanted to double check. Did you say, I'm just going by what's in the report, but I think I heard you just say uh, in terms of uh, the loss of parking that it would be five spaces? Um, that's correct. On both sides of the street, there'll be one side on sort of like the north in between the uh, a, an existing driveway and a crosswalk. And then um, because of sort of the curve of the road, it's um, any sort of cars parked in front of that crosswalk, um, make it so that drivers really can't see pedestrians until they've already you know, entered the street there. So this would sort of extend that no parking zone and protect it. And, and I, I definitely agree. I know that 
when I've driven by there and there's been games um, at, at um, Buzzle Field and or Arlington Catholic High School Field, um, and I see not only our student athletes and our students from both high schools, as well as our youngsters from Buzzle Field, but grandparents and strollers and wheelchairs and walkers. And um, I know when I see all the cars parked on both sides, I just kind of squint a little and say a little prayer <laughs> going through there. Um, and uh, as well as sometimes seeing other cars who get impatient uh, and kind of want to buzz through there. So um, I, I'm definitely in agreement with that recommendation because a lot of the times with SUVs and, and larger vehicles, um, you really can't see anyone until they step out into the road, which um, frightens me to death. So, uh, and again, thank, please pass along our thanks to the committee. I know we put a lot on your platter. You don't have a plate anymore. Um, give me another word for something that's bigger than platter. I'll say that's what we, um, but it's it's definitely appreciated. And once again, a, a pretty much all volunteer committee um, that's bringing their expertise from their day job and um, helping Arlington make not only safer, but um, also a community that uh, a lot of people want to get involved in the process. And so sorry to be so wordy there. Thank cool. you, Ms. Swan. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Maha. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the presentation. I'll second the motion. Um, we spent a lot of time in Basel Field, and it, it can be a little treacherous to cross there. Um, we made some improvements a few years ago, which made it better, but certainly didn't solve all the problems. So I think it's a working progress, and I do appreciate tax efforts on this. Um, I also think unrelated to the what's right before us it is a discussion that we can have further about how the permit parking works on the lot on the back side of buzzle because it, we i we're often there on the weekend and i think a lot of the permit holders use those spots for, uh, to work during the work week and there's never anyone parked there in, during the weekend when buzzle gets m the most use um but again, that's unrelated to this, and I don't want to bog down your presentation, but um, as it triggered my memory that I wanted to talk about that, I thought, thought, thought I threw that out there so somebody can hold my feet to the fire to follow up on it. So again, thank you for the work on this. I think it will make a big help, and um, hopefully we'll continue the discussions to, to make it as safe as possible in that location. Thank you, Mr. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, yeah, thank you, Ms. Swan, for and and all the members of TAC for the for the comprehensive report uh, on on this area. And it is a challenge if you're driving down Summer Street and there there is activity at the park. You get close to that crosswalk and you just can't see people coming out. Just a, one question, um, and you mentioned holding off on the the more costly capital improvements. That the flashing beacon is. That that is not one of the more costly improvements. Is that that's as I read the recommendation, that's being recommended to install in in the short term. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify on on that point. Um, hopefully, as as soon as possible, it would definitely um, alert drivers, and especially uh, we're recommending a rapid flashing beacon that it's paired with a sort of advanced work, warning beacon. Um, I think there's a similar one on Lowell Street. And so this will give drivers ahead of the curve um, advance warning that they may need to stop. Um, I did ask our um, DPW and they said that this sort of beacon can be moved. They can sort of salvage the, the footing, they'll leave that concrete in the ground, but they, they can move that sort of beacon and simply um, install a new footing for it. If there is a, a shift um, in the future that would necessitate like repositioning that beacon. Okay, thank, th thank you for that. That was gonna be my second question. And, and uh, I do see a need for it in the short term. So I'm glad it can be installed sooner and there's an ability to move it. So again, thank, thanks for the presentation. And I certainly will support Mrs. Mahan's motion here. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Well, yes, well, a, a, a 
I feel as if I can't say too much because I'd be patting myself on the back. But we all know that I mean, uh, everyone else on that community does a whole lot more work I mean, than I do. I mean, so I really am complimenting the work that the committee does. I mean, uh, man, I'm continuing to learn a lot by being on the committee. And and maybe I just didn't see it, I mean, the first time when um, we were approving this, because sometimes I have to pop out to another meeting. But but um, that product, including the 1972 um Special speed regulation is impressive. I mean, uh, uh, not only that you knew of its existence, but then you went ahead and put it in the report. So, so um, those little details always impress me. But thank you for the work and um, the recommendation. And, and I have asked the town manager, I mean, uh, at some point in the near future, I mean, to let us know um, what happens, I mean, um, when we approve these I mean the next steps and so that I mean we've gotten requests from um, people who've raised these issues they want to kind of know what happens and so the town manager is going to give us a little bit of a rundown on that so on a motion by Ms. Mahan uh, to accept the recommendation from TAC for um, this intersection you know this crosswalk and a second uh, by by Mr. Hurd um, Ms. Mr. Hahn. Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's your name is full. Thank you. See you around. Take care. Bye. Uh, bye. So moving on, item number nine, discussion and update fossil fuel infra infrastructure. So that's over to you, Mr. Hyman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, 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 excuse yeah. me, just for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just wanted to announce on this discussion, I'm sorry, Attorney Heim, um, I'm going to be recusing myself from the discussion of the the, the, um, the fossil fuel infrastructure. So I just wanted to alert you to that before you began that discussion. All right. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Sorry, I didn't see you. you know. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the purpose of this agenda item is really to give the board a general update and uh, answer any questions that the board might have. Um, did we lose yeah. Ms. Mahan? Yeah, yeah, I was about to interrupt too to say, I mean, uh, so I think we lost her. I mean, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't intentional. I mean, so, so um, maybe we can just like wait a couple of minutes, I mean, and see if she can rejoin us. You know, we'll give it a go. Um, uh, Mr. I, I see Ms. Mahan in the attendees list, so I think uh, if she could be promoted to panelist, that might do the job. Okay. Thank you. There, there you are. I suspect you can hear us. Back, great. Nice to meet. So, so um, just in case you missed it, Mr. Corsi, you know, um, I'm just stepping out for this part of the uh, conversation. Um, so, Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the purpose of this agenda item is just to keep the board abreast of some developments relative to the town's efforts to uh, regulate the installation of essentially new uh, fossil fuel lines for. Uh, major renovations or for new construction. The background to this is, as the board may recall, at a special town meeting in December of 2020, the town meeting passed both a proposed bylaw and a home rule petition that would allow the town to regulate uh, the installation of fossil fuel infrastructure in furtherance of uh, many, many of its goals, including its serial goals and its um, general climate change uh, and local air pollution goals. That special legislation essentially uh, was, was a, um, an effort that many other communities were engaging in at the same time, including some of our neighboring communities like Brookline, uh, or not neighboring communities, nearby communities like Brookline. And the result of that was a municipal fossil-free, uh, fossil fuel-free building demonstration program. 
essentially a 10 community pilot program to allow communities to have that authority, which otherwise we would not have. Normally fossil fuels are regulated by um, state law and the Department of Public Utilities, but to allow us essentially the ability to enact a program like the one that Arlington uh, tried to get the authority to uh, enact uh, through town meeting, uh, through home rule petition. There are some conditions on that. I won't go through all of them right now, but just to say that through the substantial efforts of this board, the Clean Energy's Future Committee, many uh, dedicated Arlington residents, we have sort of reserved our spot as one of the priority communities that gets to participate in this project. In order to keep going, we have to submit what's called a letter of intent by September 1st, 2023, um, an application by November 10th of 2023, and then have all of our eligibility requirements met by February 11th of 2024. Now, again, without going into too much detail, we've already met a lot of those because we've already uh, enacted a home rule petition. We don't need to do it again. But one thing that we do need to do is enact um, a local bylaw. Unfortunately, the timing of this is all a little bit tricky because the Department of uh, the DOER has promulgated some draft regulations, which would sort of concrete what exactly the town needs to do and when uh, with respect to this program, but those regulations may not be finalized until as late as June of this year. Um, so the only sort of action item right now is those draft regulations um, have a comment period that's open until February 8th. What we have done, Talia Fox, uh, uh, the town's sustainability uh, director, myself, and members of the Clean Energy's Future Committee have met um, in an attempt to, uh, I know Mr. Helmut is, is part of that group, uh, in an attempt to sort of garner a general understanding of what some of the potential issues might be uh, for these regulations. Uh, the most concrete issues are things like timing, uh, as well as what level of discretion we're gonna to have to design a uh, fossil fuel free bylaw for Arlington. Um, and the only major step here really is for us to see whether we wanna comment on these regulations. So the board doesn't need to take a vote, it doesn't need to do anything necessarily, but if board members want to provide some input or perspective to myself, to uh, Ms. Fox, um, it would be helpful so that the manager can decide uh, how much we should be commenting on these draft regulations and whether or not we wanna have somebody present at the hearing for these draft regulations to just emphasize that it's important that communities like Arlington have been fighting for this um, authority for some time have some discretion to regulate fossil fuels uh, as closely to the bylaw that we passed as possible. And also that we have enough time to meet these eligibility requirements. Because for example, we have no control over how long it takes for DHCD or for the municipal law unit of the attorney general's office to approve certain actions required for us to join the pilot. So I, I know that's a mouthful um, and it's got quite a long uh, and complicated procedural history but if the board members, have, if board members have any questions or concerns, um, I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability now, uh, but I'm also happy to take any individual feedback the board might have um, aimed towards uh, the town providing some comment that, again, ensures the town's rights uh, to join this program are maximally protected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. And I kind of got the feeling that Mr. Helmets wanted to say something. No? No? Okay, all right. It just seemed like you were leaning forward with your hand kind of. Okay, you know, so. Listening, um, int listening intently, that's all. There we go. You know, so um, any comments, questions from colleagues? You know, uh, Mr. Hine. Mr. Chair, if the board doesn't has any comments after tonight, uh, please just make sure to uh, provide them to me or to Ms. Fox or the town manager so we can make sure that. Um, anything that the board would like to express or like to have us vet with these draft regulations is something that we think about. Like, I'll just give you like a small example. One of the things that Arlington passed in its original bylaw that we wanted to have the authority to enact was an exemption uh, for um, cooktops, essentially stoves. We wanted to be able to have our bylaw would allow the exemption of that from a, from, from a prohibition on installing a fossil fuel line. Um, the current model regulation uh, that DOER has promulgated, our model bylaw that DOER is suggesting, my apologies, doesn't allow for that exemption. 
Uh, we think that these regulations will probably give us some latitude with respect to waivers and exemptions and things of that nature, but that's not certain. And so that's one point that we think could uh, could be clarified in the model, right, in the draft regulations so far. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. And if board members have any um, feedback or would like to talk more, please uh, contact my office or Ms. Fox. Thank you. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, that is interesting. Because I, I, I would have thought that um, perhaps people would have been a little more aggressive being and not wanted that exemption. Because I was also thinking about the, the hot water heaters and there's like an exemption for um, units that are 12,000 square feet or larger, meaning that they can heat their water uh, with, with gas. And I was kind of wondering, well, can't we just like, can we just use like electric and hot water heaters before uh, and not use the tanks at all? That said, I mean, uh, I think you have a great commission in, in town uh, and and I'm inclined to to go with me, their recommendations. I know you'll be working with them. So so um, uh, follow their guidance. I mean, Mr. Hanlon, I mean, cert certainly talk with me about it and I understand you know, the rationale. So I'm supportive I mean, of, of what he uh, is in favor of and would defer to his position on things because of his Death and breadth of knowledge, in, and uh, probably um, when this comes forward and needs someone to speak to it, I mean, um, I will no longer be chair. Who knows? Even if, even if I'll be on the board, you know. But but if I am in a position, you uh, know, to be able to speak on behalf of the board, I mean, I'll be happy uh, to to do that if the chair at that time, I mean, um, will allow me to do so. I mean, so I hope that's enough guidance, at least for now. Uh, uh, and if not, you know, I may have something else to say later, unlikely. So um, so you don't need us to do anything, but just, okay. No, Mr. Chairman, thank you. All right, seems like nothing else. So um, maybe we can bring back Mr. Corsi. Thanks, Mr. Corsi. Yeah, so we'll now move on to an update on the long range plan, so. I will turn this over to my colleague, Mr. Corsi, the chair of that committee, the Long Range Planning Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, just to, to update board members, um, last week the Long Range Planning Committee met, and we've been meeting throughout the, the, the fall and winter. And uh, earlier this month, the town manager issued his budget, and uh, within his budget recommendation is the current five-year a plan or, or a list of projections over the next several years. And, and what they show right now is that in, for fiscal 24, the upcoming year, um, it's unlikely that we will have a deficit. Um, for fiscal 25, however, there is a projected deficit of about $2.6 million. And then it rises dramatically after that period. Um, we're at the now in the fourth year back in 2019 when we put the, the 2019 override on the ballot, we made a commitment that we would not come back to the voters for at least four years um, with a request for a, a subsequent override. So I'm not here to make a recommendation or, or do anything like that, but we are at a point where we're getting close to um, requiring a discussion um, as to the timing and if it is this year, the potential amount of an override. And in talking to the town manager as he presented to the Long Range Planning Committee, because we have a new governor, the governor's budget is not submitted until March 1st. And so the local aid numbers are not gonna be known. There are estimates that are available, but until that budget comes out, that that is a the best indication of, of, of the starting point. And that really goes a long way to determining what the outlook will be in fiscal 25. So as, as we move forward, um, Long Range Planning is going to meet on February 17th. And then after the governor's budget comes out on, on March 10th, between now and those dates, the town manager will be presenting his budget to us along with a presentation of the five-year plan. I imagine that's going to be in one of our February meetings. I'd leave that to the chair. He also is presenting his budget to the Finance Committee on February 1st. Um, one other thing I would say as part of the long range planning discussion, the board will recall when we did have the last override request, the, the commitments I, I referred to, there was a series of commitments on spending both on the town 
and the school side. And, and I think given where we may be going over the next couple months, um, the suggestion was made for, for schools to think about what type of proposal they would like to make for, or would make for commitments that we would have to consider as part of the, um, the, over, the override. And uh, we'll also need to hear a lot more from the town manager in terms of timing, but uh, did want to update the board. And, and I, I would guess within the next several weeks, we're going to have a detailed presentation from the town manager exactly where um, our, our uh, the financial situation, where things stand and um, where it could go between now and March. And, and I know the chair, Mr. Chairman, you were at the meeting as well. I know, I know you might, might want to add to any other observations you had from, from that meeting and the timetable. No, no, the timetable meeting reflected it all um, perfectly. I mean, um, so so um, it, I, I did come out of it with some thoughts, especially about um, new growth being, and I'll be discussing that a little bit later when we talk about uh, potential warrant articles. You know, Ms. Ms. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you hear me? I don't know if I muted myself. Nope, can you hear just fine. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to ask either the chair of long range planning or town council, uh, not necessarily tonight, unless they know the answer. Um, but I know the town submitted, I think it was a home rule petition um, after re regarding the town manager and his or her reporting um, relative to the budget. And I know, I, I believe Mr. DeCourcy reported on some conversations that he had and others with the finance committee to kind of work that out. Um, I know it was submitted to the state. I have a memory that it may, it, it, if it hasn't been recently uh, enacted, it should be soon. So I don't know if Mr. DeCourcy or Chenny Heim have any word on that. If they don't, that's fine. If either one of them could look into it and just um, uh, forward that information to the board. Son? I don't um, have a update at the, my fingertips. Um, I, I know it's been filed and I, I believe that it, um, apologize, I know that somebody actually gave me an update on this recently and it's, it's in my mind, but I, I don't remember, but I can, I can uh, give the answer to that um, as soon as possible yeah. and, and let the yeah. board know. If you can, I, I have a memory in my head that somebody told me it cleared the last hurdle in the state of it has passed. So if somebody could just check into that and let the select board know if that's the case, great. If not, what the anticipated date is. So thank you. Mr. Corsi. And I don't know if Mr. Corsi, thank you, sorry. Sure. Yeah, it, it, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and, and yeah, just to follow up, that, that was enacted, but because of the timing of it, Mr. Pooler completed his budget submission on the, the pre-existing schedule. <laughs> required him to, to complete that by January 15th and, and then have the subsequent presentation. So for next year and, and, and for this year, because Governor Healy has additional time on the budget, the timing wasn't as critical. Next year it will be um, because that will give the town manager additional time. So next, next year uh, will be February 1. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, and so we will move on um, to item number 11, update on the Tom Manager search process. That's me. So it, um, the screening committee met for the first time um, last week. Uh, we uh, got 20 uh, submissions um, uh, and uh, we have decided that we're going to interview um, six candidates over to um, two days, February 2nd and, and February 7th. And, and um, I think um, I think we're making good progress here. I mean, I, I would imagine in if we um, want, we could probably plan on when we might, as a committee want, uh, as a board, um, have in our um, meeting, you know, to interview uh, the finalists, you know, I'm thinking that could potentially be you know, um, during the week of the 20th, you know, uh, but just something um, about it. We can 
probably nail something down um, at our next meeting on the 6th. And, and so um, I'll turn it over to my colleagues for questions, comments. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Hellman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what's the expectation for the number of finalists that, that will, um, does, does the committee understand what the select board's request is? Have we made a request to, you know, how many, uh, sort of no fewer than, no greater, no more than finalists that, that are turned over to us? And, well, it'll, it'll be two or more, you know, I, mean, I guess potentially zero. I mean, if, if we like interview everyone and it's like, oh, nothing good here, you know, I mean, that's not going to be the case because we, we, we had some really, really good uh, applications be, but, but at a minimum too, because it has to be, because we're not, we're not selecting, we're screening, you know, and so. Um, uh, yeah, um, thank you. I, you know, I think I think that we hadn't explicitly had the discussion. I think that it might. I don't know if we need to vote or not. If 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 we do, if the chair would entertain a motion, I'd be happy to make one. If my other colleagues are interested, but I think the important point is that um, the screening committee. If if we feel like we've given the screening, screening committee enough parameters, and if we want to weigh in on on that question of setting a sort of a minimum um, or or a maximum, I mean, what what it has been in my mind is. I'd like to see no fewer than three and no more than five with a preference to three or four. Um, that's just me. Um, I'm not, I don't, and forgive me if, if we've discussed this already and I'm just having a, an early senior moment. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, if many of the colleagues feel, feel like we need to discuss it or vote on it, I, I'd, I'd leave that to you. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing any hands being up. Uh, I would say, you know, especially given the folks that are on the screening committee, being, uh, we are going to um, bring forth being, um, as many as we think we should um, come forward, you know, uh, to be worth me the candidate's time and, and the board's time. You know, so, uh, and I think if we try to mandate a number, we, uh, that could make things potentially a little uh, complex. I mean, especially if we, when it comes time for the names to be made public, I mean, things begin to, to change. You know, now I think we, we are sophisticated enough that we could handle that I mean so if the board definitely wants to set a number you know then the screening committee will abide by that you know uh, so uh, but but I think you can I think you trust us be uh, to 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 bring you um, forward me you know, a good number of candidates I mean that are worthwhile uh, yeah Ms Mahan <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not that history dictates, um, but I, I know in the past, and I think it has to do with once it gets to the next level, we have to um, publish, make right. public their name. Um, but in the previous town manager searches, um, and anyone who knows more than me, please correct me after this, but um, in, in the previous searches, I've been involved with, I'm blanking what it is, three or four. Um, we have traditionally, and I'm not saying we have to, but traditionally have received three candidates' names. Um, but then again, I believe when it gets to that next step, we have to make, uh, we have to make public their names. So I would be fine with four or five, but I think three, um, works as well as um, I'd rather make three names public versus five, but I'm not against that either. So I just wanna let you know in the past, um, traditionally there's been three, we make their names public and go from there. Um, but again, I'll be guided by uh, whatever the committee um, puts forth to us. I just would, uh, I just know that the committee also is cognizant, uh, is also aware that uh, the next step in the process does involve a more public 
uh, part of that process. Uh, so uh, three would be ideal, but if you, if you come up with more than that, then that's what comes out of the committee. So thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. And I want to make it clear what I mean by trust us too, is that me, me, I want you to trust us to make, to allow the select board to make the decision. I mean, um, I mean we're not going to try to um, limit uh, the, the decisions I mean. And so, so, um, so, so that's really what I'm getting at. So Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. And, and I think we all have uh, the utmost mm -hmm. confidence in the, in the screening committee and, and um, you know, we're, we're all, all, Pleased to, to to hear that you 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 started and and it, it it sounds like a great group. I think just to Mrs. Mahan's point, I and I don't want to dictate the exact number. I don't, you know, we don't want to um, limit you in terms of what 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 would come forward. But I I do feel like anything lower than three, I think, becomes potentially a problem just because sometimes candidates pull out at that at that last stage. So so three. My experience in earlier um, search committees and not being in the seat that I'm in now is that we've seen three or four. I wouldn't want to tell you this is exactly what we want, but but I, I guess I would say that I, I, one or two, I think, is is a little bit of a, a, a problem in terms of what comes through um, for us to consider. And it's just a comment. And, and you are all in the best position to evaluate the, um, the resumes and to conduct the interviews at this point. Well, just just to be clear, one isn't legal because that means that we're doing a selection. So, so you're definitely getting getting two or more. And but I, I will say it's helpful to have a sense of what the what the board thinks would be the maximum um, number of candidates you um, would want to um, interview. What you think is, I think, not only the, your preference but also what you think is is practical. Um, uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't want to belabor this because I think we're all in the same place. Um, yeah, I think three would probably be the minimum that we'd expect. Um, and it would be odd if it feels like to get six. So I think three to five is a good range. And you have some leeway based on that range. And I don't think we need a motion as much as just I think everyone on the board has expressed that that's our wishes to see three to five names come out of the the screening committee. And I think we can leave it at that. So in case someone doesn't want to just leave it at that, if you want to say a little bit more, here's your chance. And, uh, all right, we're going to leave it at that. And, uh, 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 and I, 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 I have my orders and I'm going to present them to the screening committee as such. And, uh, so. Uh, Moving on uh, to a discussion and potential vote in on um, overnight parking pilot in and so I'll start this one off you know and and just say kind of for the record you know I mean, someone forwarded to be me, me, uh, email I think from the a list I mean, and I, I just want to say you know um, promise is not a word that I use you know uh, uh, me, I I have goals and intents you know and and be at the extent to which those are accomplished be vary me it, it, it's based on circumstances me me i always try to achieve my goals I mean i always intend to but but me to me I mean promise is a word that's just so laden with emotion being and and uh means that i'm locked into a position so anytime someone says that I me mean, um len as a group len promise something you know it's a mischaracteriz mischaracterization, you know, uh, and so, so, so we are being, I think, as transparent in as we can be in this process, I mean, uh, uh, and, and these meetings are all um, recorded, people can look at them, I mean, I think we've laid out a, a kind of timeline um, to when we want to make a decision, you know, um, and that's at the last meeting in February 27th, I mean, and so at the previous meeting that said that uh, we would um, discuss two items, I mean, that I think we need to flesh out, you know, or, or, or resolve, I mean, um, for de determining what the nature of the pilot is going to be. I mean, the first one is whether it's going to be Tom wide I mean, um, and the second is, is the, um, amount that we will charge for a permit, you know, um, and so, so I want to open the discussion up to those two issues, I mean, 
in this segment, but before moving forward, I want to um, turn to uh, Mr. Corsi to see if he wants to say or add anything. Uh, yeah, thank thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just on your point on on, on promises, and and I go back to the the very first discussion I had on this when back before I was chair even, um, and in talking to people, I, I made no guarantees as to where the board would end up. But what I did guarantee is that there'd be a discussion about it, and 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 uh, that certainly is what we're having here. So um, I I'm in agreement with you in terms of the. The whole, you know, with, whether it's promise or you know, we, we go through a process here, we make recommendations, but at the end of the day, it's the full board that decides this. And and uh, um, you put this on the agenda several times, and, and we've had discussions on it. And I think that's that's where we are. But there were there was, in my recollection, there was no guarantees as to what was going to happen, but we were going to talk about it. And, and I mean, and, and certainly I mean, our, our goal and our strong intent is to have uh, another forum. I mean, um, certain, when we have as many details as we can work out I mean, and then get input from, from residents I mean, as to what we're thinking and, and perhaps um, change based on input. Mr. Hurd. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So you, just so I'm clear, you want thoughts on those two issues right now? Yeah, yeah, and I think if we were going to focus on one, it would be maybe um, whether we do Tom White mean, or um, or or not. I mean, because uh, I think that'll be the easier one, and then the, the harder one I think will be um, whether and how much to charge for a permit marking. You know, so yes, those two. Famous last words. We'll see if that is easy. Um, yeah. I I think I've put some thought onto this, and I know you you both have. Put a lot of work and talk to a lot of people on this. I mean, I think that it should be a townwide pilot just because eventually, if it gets whether it's a ballot question or we decide if it's going to be a permanent change, I think it would have to be townwide because if we put it just in one geographical location, I think that we we hear a lot of noise from people that aren't in that location that have issues with it. Um, and I think if you're going to do a pilot, you want to get the best, most accurate results that you can from the pilot. Um, and it could be a situation where you limit it to East Arlington and then it's a wild success in East Arlington. And then we have a ballot question and it gets turned down again. Um, so I think to get the right data, it should be a town wide pilot. Um, I do think there should be some sort of a fee. Um, I get, I don't know if we can hammer out in a meeting exactly what that would be, but you know, my understanding is this is instead of just a lifting of the overnight parking ban, it's more of a relaxing of our our requirements to issue overnight parking stickers. Right now it's very strict and very hard to get an overnight parking sticker. This is us saying that, you know, come to us and we'll give it to you. And I think in order to do that, you should have some sort of a fee just to make sure, because we don't want people that don't necessarily need over to park on the street, to park on the street just because it's more convenient when they have just as easy parking spaces in, the, in their driveways. And I think some sort of, even if it's an, some, a nominal fee, I don't think any of the fees that we charge are exorbitant, even for the the parking lots that we have last time I checked it was about a dollar a day but if we come up with some sort of a fee for the permit that limits it to the people that need it and again that's what gives us the most accurate results whereas if we don't charge a fee for the permit but we're eventually going to charge a fee down the line it's apples and oranges when we're trying to look at how how well the program was received so those are my two thoughts thank you sir Ms. Mahad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Hurd said exactly what I was thinking, so I won't go on and on and on, but I definitely think it should be town-wide for the pilot, and I definitely think there should be a fee, because even for the pirate pilot, because if there was not one, um, I think it would taint the study, taint the pilot in the fact that, as Mr. Hurd said, everybody might just say, we can all park on the street overnight now, if there's no fee, um, 
and that doesn't really give you a true census of um, people that actually are going to or actually do need this because they don't have any other option if there's a fee. Um, as Mr. Hurd stated, it, it indicates intent more. So yes, townwide, yes, fee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Okay, Mr. Helmuth, yeah, I was hoping you'd want to chime in, but I wasn't going to force it, so thank you. This is one where I definitely want to listen to my more experienced colleagues first. Um, but I agree on both points. Um, I think with respect to the fee, sorry, it's, uh, our good DPW is making noise outside plowing my street. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that, uh, all of you. Um, I, I've been thinking about the fee, and you know, we don't know what it's going to be, of course, but uh, I'm open to being talked out of this, but I, I right now feel like it should cover the cost, the incremental cost, if there's going to be a cost of administering a, a much larger permit program. So for me, I need to know, it's a little chicken or egg because we don't really know what the demand is going to be. I think we can expect it'll be substantial, but, but that's a guess. So um, I'm glad I don't have to guess what, what the uptake will be, but we do need to, to at least uh, make an educated guess, an informed guess about what, what the uptake and workload will be for, for administration of it. And, all, and, I, and I would really want to see a very thorough analysis of that so that we understand what we're getting into so that we are confident we can do it. Um, for me, tying that to the cost of the stickers is, is pretty important. Given the presentation we just had about the long range, long range plan and the need for a pending override, um, again, I don't have a, I'm not, it's not a hill I'm going to die on, but I would feel better about administering a new service or a new program that, that is, you know, it's, it's a new thing. It's an optional thing that people don't have now, um, that the fee would reflect the, the cost, the cost of that service, because not everybody uh, will use that or necessarily needs to use that. So that's kind of my thinking about that. Um, I look forward to hearing more from the community and from my colleagues about that. And um, I think beyond that, if I can color outside the lines just a little bit, I I, I think that, uh, you know, it, I am very comfortable that this should be a select board decision. I think what I understand from the history of this is that it's a complex issue that we heard in the, even in the first forum and in past conversations that there are people with sincerely held beliefs that differ on this. I heard in the last forum that there's a lot of listening and understanding going on between those people in each position too. Um, but I think it is our decision. I think as one of the five people making that decision, I would welcome the opportunity to hear more from the community in a structured way. So another forum, I don't know if it's a survey, I, I know what it is, I leave that to you, Mr. DeCourcy and others working on this. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm looking for before I'd be prepared to make a decision of whether even we do this is, um, is in the operational details of the permit program, what's really involved and we're really sure we can do it. And the final thing I would say too, um, is encouraging us to really be serious about a pilot. And uh, I, I think so that it doesn't just become a de facto policy that we go into any good pilot program with a clear idea of what we want to learn an operationalized idea of what that means. What are we gonna look at You know, a, a list of things? Um, what's gonna be success or failure? How do we define that? What kind of outcomes are we gonna, are we expecting? Um, it's okay for some of that to be open-ended because that's the nature of, of, of this, but I would just encourage us to be very thoughtful about that so that we can say to the community and defend why this really is a pilot program and not kind of as a soft launch to a, to a permanent product, but that we really would Pardon my cough drop. That we really would take this um, seriously and, and look at what happens before we decide whether to make this a permanent program or not. Thank you. Mr. Um, Corsi, do you want to go next or do you want me to? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just go. I, and, and I think, and thank you to, to our colleagues when uh, Mr. Pooler had presented the memo last meeting. That was the first opportunity for our colleagues to take a look at some of the recommendations and now I think we, it's safe to say that there is a consensus um, that it should be town-wide. One, one thing I want to ask you Mr. Chair maybe for, for input from, uh, from our colleagues as well 
One other issue that had come up in the discussions that Mr. Pula had with the department heads is whether we do this on one side of the street or two sides. And, and I think in addition to the fees, which I, I think there's some more analysis that probably needs to take place before we set on a, a, an amount, but I, I would, I'm um, wondering the consensus of the department heads who met with the town manager was that it should be a one-sided, one side of the street program for the six months, but I don't know if any other members have any um, thoughts on that or any, any you know, how, uh, how that strikes them. Well, my recollection from last meeting was that we had decided on one side and that's why there were just these two outstanding issues. I could be dreaming, you know, uh, uh, or, and certainly I, I uh, if my colleagues want to chime in on that one, uh, we can go around the horn, you know, so I'll, Start with some. That's great. Yeah, no, sorry, I missed that. That's no, no, no. That, if that's if that's what we did, then 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 fine. But but um, but still, with some, maybe they can tell me whether I'm streaming or whether I'm <laughs> uh, Ms. Mahan. I don't know if we were dreaming at the last meeting or this meeting, but I agree with one side. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. I dream of a one side program. <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we talked about one sided, and I think most town cities and towns do odd even parking. So, yeah, you know, odd right. years, odd numbers, even years, even numbers, and make it simple. Right. We're all confusing. We'll do odd on even years. And, <laughs> but um, I think generally people will know when they see which car side of the street cars parked on, then they'll figure it out. Is that like with? When the the word is like green, but its color is red, and you're supposed to like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. So, so, uh, so then, Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah. Oh, not, not nothing further. Okay. You know. Uh, so, um, so with respect to um, how much I mean, so um, as I think Mr. Hurd noted, I mean it's a dollar a day, which we use a lot. Uh, I um, work with. Um, Ms. Meyer need to get some data on what's going on in the lots. I mean, and uh, we have right now, I mean, um, 46 users, I mean, 45 you take out the employee that's using it. I mean, um, and of those 45, I mean, 18 I mean, or, or not charged because we have a process by which uh, people can uh, prove hardship and then they're not charged for it. So that's roughly, um, 30%, I mean, uh, that, I mean, are not paying, I mean, roughly, I mean, $360 a month, you know, um, so uh, my inclination, I mean, would be, I me mean, to keep the permit um, at that level, I mean, roughly $400 uh, a year, $100 a quarter, uh, because, I mean, we don't want to encourage people, I me mean, who don't need to use street parking to do so. I mean, we do have a program I mean, by which we can uh, handle hardship. I think the question now is, is whether it is just an all or none type program, I mean, or do we try to scale it in some way, you know, or, or increment it in some way that will add complexity to it. You know, we don't know what the man is going to be, you know, uh, uh, we just don't know, you I mean, uh, uh, and, and so I mean, we can maybe try and get a sense of that. I mean, at the next forum, which I, which I'm tentatively thinking, I need to circle back to uh, uh, Mr. Corsi on this. Could be on the 15th, I mean, uh, uh, a Wednesday after, um, um, yeah, the Wednesday. Uh, I see Mr. Mr. Hines hand up, so I'm going to stop. It's, yeah, uh, Mr. Jenkins, maybe I misunderstood. I apologize if I did, but. Um, I just want to be clear that when we set a fee associated with something, it's supposed to be tied to the cost of um, of basically administering the fee. So one of the things that we should have calculated is what do we think it's going to cost to run this program, or at least our best guess, uh, because we can't raise revenue, nor can we necessarily um, have a goal to be dis to discourage somebody from engaging in a particular activity uh, by setting a fee at a certain level. So um, what we want to try to do is capture the costs. And if the costs are high, we can certainly allow them to be high because they probably will be, you know, somewhat significant in terms of enforcement. Um, or you can sort of artificially depress them. But you just want to try to make sure that if there was anybody who was going to say, 
what does this fee anchor to? We'd say, well, this fee is anchored to our best estimate of what it will cost the combination of town departments to essentially administer this program. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, uh, so so I, I need to explore. I mean, the con the 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 um, consequences aren't quite the right word for the ramifications of that. You know, in terms of um, just overall goals of the town, because for, for me the goal isn't to raise revenue. It is more to not increase I mean the desire for people uh, to utilize street parking um, when they aren't now. Um, um, with because because the cost of that are detrimental, but we can I don't think we can really tie it to I me mean, a specific cost of the town. It'd be more I mean of a movement away from I me mean, what we consider I me mean, sustainable I mean um, transportation you know and and a sustainable living environment as in planet. Um, so Ms. Mahan, and just very quick, and I apologize if I wandered off in my mind, but um, I, I know we're discussing agenda item 13 and I don't think we're doing a vote tonight. Did I miss, are we going to do agenda item 12? Do we still have two items under that or did that get tabled and I wasn't paying attention? No, Ms. Mahan, I skipped it. I'm sorry. It was a, it was a, it was oh, a, okay. I'm sorry. No, it was a mistake on my part. I, mean, I, 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 I inadvertently skipped it, you know, so, and, no. and I, no, I have these fine. exasperated no, I looks. I see the town clerk on the, on the, on the uh, participants, and I'm sure she's really intrigued by our discussion on this and would probably e be equally intrigued on uh agenda item 14 but um right. after this if we can go back to 12. thank you mr Chair. yeah yeah no 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 in my exasperated look it's like yeah i can't believe i missed it you know but but I me mean, my eyes just aren't the best and i really did miss it so thank you you know um uh, uh, so we'll cer certainly circle back to that really quickly i think because uh, we're not i don't i don't think we're gonna get to a resolution on this one now and certainly I mean, what mr heim has said has made me like oh, i need to i need to think this through some more, you know, because we need to, yeah, just need to think it through some more. Uh, any other comments? Okay, well, look, I mean, uh, it was easy, Mr. Hurd. I mean, uh, we did do the, the town white part of it. So, uh, and, and so I'll uh, two down and just um, uh, that one big one to go and, and uh, uh, need to do some. More research, I mean, to find out because, because, yeah, anything more, I'd just be repeating myself. So, all right, thank you for that. Uh, and so, we're going to circle back to um, item number 12 um, discussion and potential vote on uh, select board or in articles. I mean, and so, um, I guess this is the point where we talk about I me mean, things that any of us may want to put on the warrant is coming from the select board. Me, but uh, I'll I'll turn to Mr. Heim to maybe just kind of set maybe the table for us on this. I Me, mean, I didn't I didn't prepare you for this, Mr. Heim. So if you have nothing to add, that's fine. We'll just discuss amongst ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, basically, this item is only on for the to the extent the board wants to take a vote to place an article on as representative of the whole board's desire to have a discussion on a certain item on the warrant. Uh, the warrant doesn't close till January twenty uh, seventh. End of this week. If certainly, if there are other articles, I would encourage you to uh, let the town manager know that you want something else in the warrant. Um, this uh, article is for to the town clerk. The chair asked that I I, I put on for discussion, and um, a number of members of the board have asked to have a discussion about amending the town manager act with respect to the term of appointment um, for an interim or acting town manager should a town manager not fulfill their three year uh, contract cycle. So, if folks have any questions about um, either one of these things. Um, I'm happy to talk um, sort of procedurally about what these articles represent and what they don't, um, but otherwise it's obviously up to the board what they want to put on the warrant uh, as coming from the select board. Thank you. Ms. Vaughn. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, not to try to derail anything, um, but my feeling is until the warrant closes, I don't think we should be voting what we approve or just or don't approve of um, as a warrant article only because of 
the, the concern that someone might say, well, traditionally the board has waited until warrant articles is closed. The board has up until the actual warrant goes to the printer um, to put in warrant articles. And um, my concern is that if we basically are conducting a warrant article hearing and then voting on a particular warrant article, a resident or residents and or a business, Arlington business, if it's applicable, could say um, that it might appear that we changed course from what we're doing, that they weren't anticipating that we were gonna hold warrant article hearings, take votes um, even before the warrant has closed. I don't want anyone to say, you know, I didn't get my opportunity. I really wanted to speak on that to the board to vote for it, to not vote for it. Um, you've never done this in the past where the warrant hasn't even closed yet and you had the warrant article hearing and voted whether or not to support something or not support something. So, and, and that is in no way a uh, indication of approval or disapproval on the two that are before us. But the board does have up until the warrant goes to print which is about three plus weeks after the uh, public announcement of the warrant closes at the end of January. So um, I know we discussed and I know the town clerk here tonight, so I don't want to circumvent or, or, or stop anything, but um, I, I know we've already had a discussion on it, um, but I, I guess I would say to my colleagues, um, I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with voting um, on any warrant article where the warrant hasn't closed yet. And, and anybody who's thinking, well, I'm going to wait till the warrant closes because then they schedule the hearings because I really want to speak to them on a particular warrant article. Um, I don't think we should be voting any tonight. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Any other comments, questions? Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you. My question is actually for town, you know, for attorney Hein, there he is, I locked you on Zoom for a moment. Um, so my going into this, realizing um, I'm a newer member, was that we needed to, I, I want to back up and say I completely agree with my esteemed colleague that we would not be holding a warrant article hearing tonight and voting on a main motion. Uh, I see a difference between voting to put an agenda item on the warrant and, and voting what, you know, having the hearing and voting what that would be. Uh, but I say that just because my assumption coming into this is that we actually needed to take a vote before the warrant closes in order to place a select board item on, on the, um, the agenda. I, I do like the idea of, of putting both the town clerk's uh, position and the town manager act uh, amendment before town meeting just as a, because I think those are important questions for Tommy to decide. So uh, I guess my question would be for Attorney Hyde, what, you know, if you could lay out your understanding of what our options are with respect to when the select board can put items on the warrant. Mr. Hyde. Mr. Chairman, thank you. The, the, yes, so I'm not put, I'm not suggesting that the select board is taking a vote on the substance of any warrant articles and moving positive action. The question or the agenda item before you is whether or not the select board wants to sponsor these two articles on the town meeting one. Um, as folks may recall, when you look through the town warrant, um, there's a bunch of articles that say inserted by the select board at the request of the town manager, or inserted by the select board at the request of the Clean Energy Future Committee, or inserted uh, by the select board at the request of some other entity, usually like the town treasurer or someone like that. Um, I think the these two articles are are there to see if the town, uh, if, the, if the select board wants to sort of say that these articles are from us. If the select board doesn't want the articles to be from you, somebody else can request them uh, be put on the warrant. Uh, but if the select board wants these articles to be put on the warrant uh, by the select board itself, um, uh, that, that was my recollection of the process that we've been engaging in, but um, but I'm not suggesting, and I think we're all in agreement, that this is not uh, going to be a warrant article hearing where 
any action that the board takes to put an article on the warrant would be uh, the same thing as moving positive action on a warrant and, and having some sort of motion in front of you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Attorney Hyde. Um, so I personally am fine with the idea of, of our voting to place the agenda item, you know, to, to place these items on the, on the warrant. I'm not going to make a motion though until I hear from the rest of my colleagues. So I think that, you know, consensus is, is a worthwhile goal here in this. Okay. Mr. Thomas, anyone else want to say anything? Mr. Mr. Corsi. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I have a, a, a question too. I mean, I, I will say just for myself, having gone through the search or the negotiation process and all of us having gone through the process with the town manager, I individually, you know, whether it's tonight or whether it's a date that we can do in the future, I personally would ask that that the, the town manager warrant article be put on because I, I do think there's some, th some issues with section 12 of the town manager act that, that we should consider. And I, I don't have anything to put before the, the, the board. I do have a question on the, on the town clerk warrant article. At the last meeting, I think there was some discussion whether, whether it's tonight or whether it's another night, whether this should come from the select board or whether this should come from the town clerk um, or, or I, I think town clerk would be the other individual. And I think that was part of the discussion. So I don't know, aside from, from timing, and I think attorney Heim said that that warrant articles can come from other uh, department heads and we've seen things come from the treasurer. We've seen things come from the town manager. I just wanna make sure that we're okay in terms of timing that if we don't take action this week to add these, that we can add them at another time. And if there is some issue on the timing, I'd like to let it be known in the town manager warrant article. I, I'd make a request tomorrow of attorney Heim to put that on. Um, so, you know, if there's any issue on January 27th, whether that request has been made. Mr. Chairman, man. Yes, please, let's, let's be sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a little bit of tension with 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 respect to what may have been long time uh, board practice once upon a time and, and, and what we've sort of been doing for the last uh, number of years. Um, the, the, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is if, the board wants to vote to put an article on the warrant as being requested by the board as a public body, that's an action that you vote on to take. If you want an article that maybe it's not something that's ready for your discussion and you wanna see if it can be requested at the request of the town manager, it's just kind of a funky thing. So the select board controls the warrant, but as you guys go through any warrant that, you, that you've had, you'll see that there are articles that are requested at at the request of the town manager and the capital planning committee, for example, usually other bodies will take a vote to say, we'd like to have these certain articles placed on the warrant. Um, or articles from a town staff member will usually get submitted uh, by the you know, close of the warrant, just so we've got everything ready by the close of the warrant. Um, in the annual town meeting cycle, it's important to remember that there's always a special town meeting within it. So uh, if there's anything the board wants further time to consider or develop, uh, the board has also oftentimes uh, put in uh, articles through the special town meeting warrant if they weren't quite ready to be voted on by the close of the annual town. Does that answer your question, Mr. Corson? Yes, thank, thank you, Attorney Hyde. Um, Mr. Hyde. Sorry for being uh, chatting Mahan tonight. Um, I just want to say to Mr. DeCourcy, uh, regarding the town clerk warrant article um, that was presented at our last meeting um, and it was posed to the board, I'm a I'm, long way of saying your memory's correct. Um, it was posed to the board. Does the select board want to put this in? Nobody made a motion. And I know I was very clear where I said, and town council can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm kind of surprised he's back on again tonight and I don't want to waste the town clerk's time, but I do remember saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not hearing a motion. I don't want to make the motion um, because traditionally if something's put on by the select board, it's sort of inherent. That means we're supporting it. Um, and I'm not speaking for any of my colleagues on any warrant article, but, and then I do know I posed the question that, um, 
it, A, was my feeling this should come from the town clerk, and B, I'm pretty sure that's been done in the past. This doesn't have to come from the select board. The town clerk could put this on, and I'm pretty sure town council um, verified that yes, and that that's sort of how we left that one. Um, it, and then as far as, um, it, if people want to change the process, um, I'm, my fear is we're going to, we're starting to double of doing everything that uh, I know town council is saying the board can vote tonight to submit a warrant article. Yes, we can, but again, I've cautioned to wait until the warrant closes because A, if the select board takes a vote tonight, and I agree on the town manager warrant article, 182%, whatever the new over 100% thing is you're supposed to say. Um, but it, you know, if we vote to put it on before we, if we're saying, well, no, you're only voting tonight to say, that you're gonna to vote to put it on the agenda to have a warrant article hearing, we're doubling the work. Um, I don't think we should vote anything tonight to be put on, submitted from the select board to go to town meeting until we're pro we probably pro have properly noticed that this is the warrant article hearing for warrant A, B, and C for town clerk, for town manager, uh, clarifications, et cetera. Um, so yes, I agree with town council. We could vote to say, oh, the board's going to put this in as a warrant article submitted as the board, then post a warrant article hearing, then take a vote, which we could run that it's a 5 a vote against a warrant article that we've submitted. So <laughs> um, long, long way of saying sort of what I said in the beginning, which was, we, I believe we already had discussion on the town clerk. Uh, and we encourage the town clerk to submit that, which I assume would be after the warrant closes, um, maybe not, and um, agree with you on the town manager. But I, I don't see how we could take a vote to say, oh, we're, we're not holding the warrant, at, uh, warrant article hearing tonight. We're just voting to put it in as a warrant article hearing. I, I think it's just doubling our work. And what if it says inserted at the request of the select board and then there's a 5-0 five, five vote against it. So uh, we, we've never really done this in the past. We usually get all the warrant articles in, board submits whatever they want to do warrant articles. Warrant article hearings get scheduled February, March and have the hearing vote. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. I guess. My head spin a little bit with a discussion, which it does sometimes with warrant articles. Um, Attorney Heim, do in order to have a hearing on this, does the select board need to have a vote to put this on the warrant? The vote that you'd be taking tonight is to put an article on from the select board. Yeah, no, I get that. So but, you still have to you, you still have to have a warrant article hearing if you correct. want substantively discuss what you want the motion to be um so there so again, uh, i guess my point is looking at it the other way does the select board have to take a vote in order for us do we have to take a vote as being requested for us from us in order to get to that warrant article hearing and if i'm not being clear then if thank you i'm sorry mr chairman yes please if you want the warrant article to be from you, um, yeah. I think what I've tried to explain is that there's a couple of different ways in which a warrant article can appear on a yeah. warrant. I think what Ms. Mahan has explained well is that um, if you don't think that the, the town clerk article could come from somebody else, um, but if you want it to come from the select board, then you should take a vote to put it on the warrant as something the select board wants to be on the warrant. Okay. If, yeah. Okay. I, I guess my thought is, I don't really care who it says inserted by in the warrant. I think people are going to take the substance of the warrant and we have to do a warrant article hearing anyways. I think there's been plenty of instances where there's been select board members that have voted to put something on the warrant and then voted against it. Um, so it seems like if we don't, it creates another step for someone else when we could just take a motion tonight. Mr. Helmuth. 
Thank you. Um, I think with respect to amending the Town Manager Act, um, for the purposes of, of I believe it was uh, Mr. DeCourcy said Section 12 to you know to to re-examine the the procedures with with um, what to do when a town manager resigns. Um, I'd like to make the case that that should be placed by the select board, and and maybe it's a bit of a special case rather than the town manager or asking you know uh, town council or somebody else to, to do that because that's our hire. And I think that we, I think it looks really reasonable for the for town meetings going to think, would, might think it's unusual if anybody else but the select board were to formally put that on the agenda. And, and, and for me, that's just saying we recommend looking at this. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we do that tonight as a select board. Uh, and my motion will be, you know, asking town council to draft appropriate language again, just as an agenda item, um, not anything to do with the merits of should we or shouldn't we, and, and not anticipating what the recommended vote would be, uh, but I just wanna get it on the warrant. Um, with respect to the town clerks, um, I um, will defer to another member if they wanna make that motion. I think it'd be fine uh, with, with doing so, uh, but I'm cognizant that the, the town clerk herself could could uh, request that to be put in the on, the, uh, on the warrant. I think that would be, uh, fine and appropriate too. The last thing I would say is that regardless of, of past practice in years past, I know that in more recent uh, years, you know, when, when the warrant closes, we generally respect that and mean that the warrant closes. And I would prefer to avoid confusion on the part of the public that things are being added to the warrant after we after the warrant closes to the public. So uh, my preference would be that we do what we're going to do. Um, before that date and, and keep that nice and clean. I am aware that we do have the option as attorney Heim reminded us of the special town meeting that's embedded in, in a Springtown meeting. So we have another crack at this. Uh, but there, uh, none, nonetheless, my, my motion for the town manager one is on the table, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, thank you. And, um, um, so we do have that motion, Ms. Mahan. I'd like to second that, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, so, um, Discussion. All right. So I have some questions. I guess Mr. Um, Mr. Heim. I mean, so any select board member could put something on the warrant as an individual, but not have to get signatures because that person is a member of the select board. Mr. Chair, what my interpretation would be is that if somebody wants to place something on as an individual, really as an individual, they should go and get uh, the requisite number of petition signatures. And I'll see that happen from time to time uh, for different folks who want to do something irrespective of what their committee or commission or board or whoever wants to put on. The select board, obviously, as the chief uh, executive officers, you know, has a conduit to the town manager, to other folks to say, hey, you know, do we have a warrant article on... XYZ and the town manager typically requests a lot of the warrant articles on the warrant. And so again, things that are requested by everybody else, the, the select board controls the warrant, uh, are in, usually phrased in some version of requested by the Rainbow Commission or inserted by the select board at the request of the town manager, things of that nature. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if there's something that you think needs to be put on the warrant that's not necessarily coming from the select board as a body, you still have the ability to communicate that to the town manager. And if it's something that's appropriate for the town manager request, you can put it on. The town manager can basically put it on the warrant at the manager's request. All I'm saying is that if there are things that the select board wants to talk about in the warrant, um, you can put an article on, uh, as we're suggesting in Mr. Helmuth's motion, Mr. Helmuth's motion um, to say the select board wants to have this discussion about this item on them. Okay. And you're taking a vote as a body to do that. But the but the member select board could go through the town manager and get it on that way is what I hear you say. If it's appropriate for the town manager, sure. You you, I, you couldn't do that for like a zoning bylaw. Right. You know, if you want a zoning bylaw on, you can talk to the redevelopment board, but that's ultimately up to them. If you want something put on by the finance committee, the finance committee has to take a vote on that. Right. Um, if you want the town manager to request you know, something from the town manager, the town manager's just got to put the manager's title on right. and make sure that's appropriate. All right. 
mean, so what I'm trying to get is like, I, I can't figure out how we as a body determine what's going to go on the warrant is coming from the select board without having a discussion about it, I mean, which isn't a hearing I mean, um, per se, I mean, or an official hearing, but it is de facto a pre-hearing on the matter. I mean, and so we are I mean, kind of coming to some kind of agreement that it should be on the art on the, on the warrant. Now, for me, I can support having something on the warrant. And I'm saying I'm just supporting having it on the warrant. I'm not saying anything about how I'm going to vote. I mean, but if that's being interpreted, I mean, as support for it, I mean, then I can certainly see how that leads other residents and maybe even other res even members of the board to go, well, you said put it on the warrant. I mean, aren't you supporting it? And now you're not. That's so confusing to them and seemingly contradictory. I mean, so it seems to me that if the select board is going to put something on, you know, then we need to have some kind of a discussion, whether that results in a vote or not, I guess is a whole uh, other thing. I mean, and, and just going back to my early, my, my one-term history on the board, I mean, I think you know, for the special town meeting that we did in September, 2020, I mean, I came to the board and said, I wanted to have this article I me mean, to create a study committee I mean, for uh, using an advisory board because I wasn't I, mean, I, I felt I needed to get the temperature of the board. I don't remember we had a vote on it or not. Maybe we didn't. People just kind of expressed general support for it. And I felt good about going ahead because I certainly wasn't going to put an article on the warrant only to have it come to a hearing and get it smacked down, you know, um, at least <laughs> smacked down by just the nature of its existence as opposed to having thought about it you know, and decided, well, that's not as good a day as we thought it was. So, so I guess what I'm getting at is that, I guess we do need to have a discussion, I mean, to get a temperature, I mean, um, and whether that results in a vote or not, I guess isn't as important, but I guess maybe we do have to have a vote if someone's gonna move ahead confidently with putting it on the warrant. And, uh, Mr. Diggins, may I just, for the, for the May, Mr. Chairman, sure, yeah. just to be crystal clear, if the board wants an article on to be from the entire board, it should take a vote to say, we want this article to be put on the warrant as from us, not from somebody else. All I'm trying to suggest is that, you know, there are other avenues the board members may have if they feel like there's something that needs to be put on the warrant, but it should be appropriate to what the subject matter is. Right. So if you can, if there's something that you want to talk to the town manager about, great. But if it's something that really bears the, for the reasons that all of you have political wisdom that, that I don't possess or pretend to possess would be confusing to folks with respect to placing something on the warrant that you don't support, but that's up to the wisdom of this body. Right, all right. So, I mean, I guess my, my feelings are that we can put something on even if we don't really support it. I mean, we just support the merit of it being on the, on the warrant. I mean, and so, so my sense is even if you don't support Maybe let's take the, the clerk I mean, um, article. I mean, even if you feel that you're going to not support it, I mean, you can at least support its existence on the warrant. You know? So I guess I'm fine with taking votes on getting these things on the warrant I mean, without them being votes I mean, on the merits of the article, because it seems like that's what we're doing anyways. I mean, so, um, so I did not hear a second I mean, for um, Mr. Helmuth's motion. Hey, Mr. Helmuth? Oh, man, I guess we, Mr. Mahan did make it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. So, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just, just to reiterate, my understanding is that's what putting something on the warrant is. It's agenda item only. Um, the decision about the board's position, the board's on the recommended vote, happens during the warrant article hearing and subsequent votes. So this is merely, uh, to me, representing that we think this should be on on the agenda. Um, I have not made a motion for the for the clerk's uh, position. I think that I would look to one of my other members to, to amend my motion if they want to do that. And if they don't, I'm happy to let my motion stand the way it is. Because again, I think that consensus is, is important here. All right. All right. Well, I'm not seeing a hand to uh, make an amendment. So before I forget the motion in a second, and again, let me just like get this one done. So on uh, a motion uh, to 
uh, for the select board to put an article regarding the um, changes to the Town Manager Act made by Mr. Hurd and second by Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yeah. Mr. Dickens. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Yeah. So. One of these times we're going to really screw you guys up and me and Eric are going to say yes when each other's names are called out. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do better here when I can like see you both in like different squares. I mean, when I'm looking like, anyways, uh, so do we, uh, the clerk, um, do we have a motion discussion regarding the clerk article, the clerk, the article related to the clerk position? Okay, all right, you know, so um, I will um, toss something in. I mean, uh, so I am, I wanted to explore, I mean, um, new growth, I mean, in a very um, systematic way, for lack of a better word. I mean, so I, I like for us to, I mean, as a town, try to figure out, I mean, um, a strategic plan, I mean, for, for new growth. I mean, we, uh, we talk about how important it is a lot, you know, um, and, and realize, I think, the benefits of it. You know, but I like for us to really look at what it takes to do it, I mean, and then set about doing it. You know? And I, I would imagine, I mean, uh, we could probably ask the town manager to create something like this. I mean, what I found as a big positive, I mean, from um, setting up a study committee for the Youth and Young Adult Advisory Group was that, it brought more people into the process, I mean, um, and 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 the, that ended up as something different than I would have come up with my own. And I kind of like it. I mean, and it involves I me mean, a twelve members of the community. I mean, who now have a real stake in it. I think this would be even bigger, you know. Uh, and and I, I think it would be let people know that this is something that we are really serious about. I mean, and get their ideas about how to do it and get by and because it, it would affect so many aspects of the town, you know, uh, and and so um, I, I would like to bring that force I mean as an article uh, by the select board to get to request that uh, the town I mean create a study committee for a strategic, a strategic plan for the new growth. I know it's a new idea, you know. So, so, and maybe, maybe I will take advantage of the fact that that we we have a, a bit more time, you know, to to get our, our article in. And to, to I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Helmuth, but but the yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Maybe it is better to hear to it, but no one really kind of knows what's on the warrant, you know. They don't know the article, so it's not like anyone knows that this was the one that came in late. Although by virtue of this meeting, they could, you know. All right. Mr. Chair, I would recommend that we close the warrant when we say we close the warrant. There are ways to get things uh, on the warrant um, un under the under that in that window. I, I just think that's best to avoid confusion on the part of the public. Mr. Chairman, may I ask yes. a question? Mr. Hart. Are you, I, 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 we, we put the, article, the agenda item as articles to include on the warrant and as evidence from a memo. If there's other things that the board wants to put on, um, you certainly can. But I, I, again, we do have the time of putting things on the special town meeting warrant. Um, so uh, if folks would like to have something more specific, um, that is an option that I just want folks to understand that they have. All right. All right. All right. Well, and then, and then there are other ways um, to to get to get this on. I mean, so okay. Well, um, all I can say is that if it does go to Tommy, I hope it gets better reception than this. You know, so so uh, we will we will we will move on. You know, I think we've um, cleared this um, this one. You know, and we'll now move to uh, item number 
14 discussion and potential vote in person participation at select board meetings. So I'm going to start this one off by just explaining me the um, collateral that I provided me on this on for this this item I mean and so it, um, it I wanted to give you a sense with the the hardcore scientific papers where me the source of my thinking I mean and 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 for anyone, even a lay person, generally, even even the science types, me, we go to for the discussion. Me, you know, you may read the abstract and you go to the bottom, read the discussion, and then you go back to the top for whatever you need to back up uh, the conclusions in the discussion. But I just wanted to get you give you a sense of of why it is that I approach the um, virus and its variants the way that I do. Uh, the more lay articles were more to let you know what the thinking was, what I saw the thinking as I me mean, months ago, because usually I like to see how accurate a prediction is, I mean, and sources that make accurate predictions are generally the ones that I will um, pay more attention to when they make um, other predictions, I mean, and uh, the, the, uh, the nature one on the pipeline on um, possible vaccines was to say there is hope. Uh, that we will get through this me in a way you know that uh, will protect us me in a much better sense me than we're getting from the current set of, of um, vaccines me so I want to go first because I just want to I think the preponderance of those articles probably would lead you to a different conclusion than where I'm gonna land and and that is it's like it, people know, at this point, I think all they need to know, and they are going to take the risk that they want to take. I mean, and as long as the town I mean, isn't at risk I me mean, for inviting people into closed spaces with not the best circulation, be it all unmasked, I mean, then I would say if they want to come to a select board meeting, they can come. I'm not going to object to it. You know, uh, me, my only concern generally before this was that I wasn't saying enough about how I felt about things, but partly I didn't because I didn't want to become like the argument me so that it would be something about the fact that I'm making an argument that makes people resistant to the information. So I kind of felt, you know, people are intelligent here. They can get the information. They can make their own decisions. Me, and so and that's where I stand on inviting people in. I'm going to mask being when I'm there because I'm masking pretty much everywhere. I go when I am around other people, you know? So so I went first, I mean, I opened it up. Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde, <laughs> Mr. Hyde that's a new one, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hurd. <laughs> um, so I, I, I guess a question for Attorney Hyde, do we need a motion if, so whereas the chair's meeting and the chair's declared that he will allow the public in, do we need a motion from the board? I think if you want, uh, Mr. Chair, may I? Yes, sure, sure, please. Um, the, the, the board, the chair, you're correct, Mr. Hurd, the chair regulates the sort of conduct of meetings. Uh, but if you guys want to have an agreed upon set of parameters, that's certainly fine for you guys to make a decision as a body. But but the board, the chair does generally set the, sort of parameters for how the meeting will operate. Yeah. Well, I make a motion that we allow the public into our meetings. I think realistically, I mean, we're probably talking, it could be, we could have a whole discussion about this and be much ado about not, nothing because most people, let's be honest, are going to participate remotely if they can. Um, I think everyone knows where I am on this. I, I didn't know where the discussion was going to go. so. I, I'm going to gear it up in different ways, but I'm not going to, you know, take this to a place it doesn't need to go because, you know, I think we are going to come to a common answer here. But again, I, I think, you know, if you look around our neighbors, they've done the same. And I think, it, it, as I've mentioned in the last meeting, that it's time for us to allow somebody to do so and to do so safely. Um, people have to be smart. You know, if you're sick, don't come to our meetings participate participate remotely just like we do as a board we say that you know if we don't feel good we're not going to come into and sit next to our colleagues um but i think for some people it may be 
that are itching to get back in and participate in the process, I think they'll look forward to this. Again, I don't think it will be a ton of people that are going to stampede into our meetings like it used to be. But I think it's a good first step, and we can always change it if it becomes more than members are comfortable with, and we are surprised by the attendance, then we can address it at that time. But at this point, I do think that this is the right move for the board. Thank you, Mr. Hurt. Anyone else? Well, look, yeah, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, for discussion, I'll, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion, and um, yeah, and just look forward to hearing what any other colleagues might have to say. But I think it's it's it's. I I think there still has to be some discretion in the chair if if we're getting guidance as as we go forward in terms of um you know whether we get it from from our health department or in in, in terms of in in person meetings. But I mean, I certainly will second the motion for for discussion before the full board now. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Yeah. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I agree with Mr. DeCorsi that, um, and I'm happy to support the motion because I, I take this as an expression of the of the board's uh, preference, and I you know appreciate the chair is already is 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 open to that. Um, but my understanding is, as as Attorney Hine said, that you know that the the discretion still lies with the chair, and and, and my expectation would be that um, on the advice of the health director, health department director, the board of health, or other uh, other authorities, um, if the chair believes that the health situation is changing, I would fully expect the chair to feel comfortable and empowered to to make the decision that in fact is in his power um, to change that. So that that would be just personally how I feel. Uh, but but given the my uh, lay understanding of the situation now I'm, I'm comfortable with that I might also choose to wear a mask I would suggest that we make good use of the filtration units that are in the select board chambers uh, for, on the theory of additive layers of protection um, and and you know and go from there thank you thank you sure. right. so um so mr Heim, I mean I, I had post question me there are no we're not putting ourselves at any kind of increased risk I mean, for legal action right by doing this by taking by, it allow, by allowing in person more people in to chamber no i i don't believe if, if we're being mr chai i think i owe you a duty to candor with respect to this i don't think that the board would Create some risk of if you're talking about a legal action against the town based on a theory of negligence or something like that, uh, or you know some sort of. I think if you, I think if the town was told by the state that uh, you can't uh, convene uh, meetings of more than ten or something like that, that would be one thing. But it's not my understanding that there are any such restrictions in place at this time. Yeah, I just need to check, you know, because because I mean, people will sue I me. Mean, over anything. I mean, so I just wanted to get a sense, I mean, as to how you felt about it. So okay. that is true, Mr. Chair. People will sue over just about anything. Um, and I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Sure. You yeah. know, so, um, well, in the two months that I have left, you know, <laughs> uh, if I uh, look, if things change, you know, it, 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 I guess I'm the most sensitive to this, you know, but it's more so from a sense of uh, not only protecting other people, but just trying to like we um, deal with this in the best way for, I know this is gonna sound kind of hokey, but, but for the species, because it's like, I mean, each infection just creates potentially more variants. I mean, and the only way we're going to quash this thing is if we get a pan um, um, vaccine, I mean, or we, you know, as a species, just try to reduce I mean the amount that it mean mutates. I mean, look, we we started off I mean wrong on this, I and mean, that's the problem. I mean, uh, uh, and and the way we handled it financially was wrong too. I mean, instead of I me mean, stop freezing debt, you know, and just keeping people I mean alive and. I mean, by giving them the income that they needed, I me mean, we essentially just said, hey. 
we give you money to, to pay your debts. I mean, we essentially just funneled the money up to the people who ha- hold the debt. I mean, and so no wonder like people just got really frustrated I me mean, by the way things played out. Uh, and so, so we just went about it the wrong way, and now we're kind of in a bad situation. I mean, and 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 I mean, what we're doing, I mean, uh, isn't making it a whole lot better. So that's where I'm coming from. I mean, but I feel that I shouldn't impose that mindset on people who feel really deprived he, by he not having people in a room or not, you know, meeting um, a, as a group. Because I think, I mean, the, the mental stress, I mean, for folks who feel that way, I mean, outweighs, I mean, the potential um, benefits, I mean, of, of staying uh, relatively healthy, I mean, I mean, I have other concerns about um, long COVID, I mean, but, that's mean. So as I said, I mean, um, um, people at this point know, I mean, um, what the risks are, I mean, um, and so uh, I think because we open the doors, I mean, they don't have to walk in. I mean, um, we're giving them opportunities, I mean, to do things um, um, remotely, I mean, uh, uh, if i um, so uh, I have generally tried to be a chair that is listening to the desires of my colleagues, you know, and and um, I'm inclined to go with that now. And if any of you all express a desire to do things differently, you know, I'll listen to that and, and bring it back to the discussion, you know, and, and we'll just decide things that way. And um, I'll just add one other thing. I did talk to um, Ms. Meyer, and, and I know that there is be some issue with respect to access you know, to our chambers. And, and I've been assured that we are working on that as quickly as we can. I think there's an issue with the glass door being that we need to get a, uh, figure out how to put a handle on it. You know? And so, uh, so it's not like we're ignoring it. I mean, we are working on it. I don't think we have a timeline as to when it will be adjusted so that there is full ADA access to the chamber, but we are working on that. So um, so it's a motion to bring people in, you know, I'll let people in by Mr. DeCourcy, being, I'm sorry, by Mr. Hurd being a second by Mr. DeCourcy. If there's no further discussion, uh, we will have a vote. We, I will listen to the outcome of that vote, and because it is the chair's decision, it will be my decision, and I will have to live with the response to it because it is my call. You know, so um, any further discussion? No. Okay, Mr. Hunt. <clears throat> Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mon. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. All right. So, um, so, what in? Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, so we um now move on to second open forum. Um, anyone there? All right. I think we can move along. Um, correspondence received. And uh, so we have a save the alewife Brook letter to Mass. DEP, MWRA, um, I forget who that's by, I read it, but I forget who it's by. I, I, oh, I know who it's by, by Save the, the Alewife, you know, uh, and um, number 16, Mass Ave Appleton Pedestrian Safety Concerns and Recommendations by Petro Sophia, uh, number 17, Recommendation Magliazzi Boulevard, or Way or Lane, you know, by the Public Memorial Committee, and number 18, and a foot of the Rocks Master Plan by Alan Tosti. And so, Mr. Mahan? Move receipt. And motion received by Ms. Mahan. Second. And a second by Mr. Hurd. Um, uh, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, might I suggest a friendly amendment to the motion to for referral to tech on the traffic letter? And referral to the chair to consider the Maliazzi Way matter at a future select board meeting. Yes. Yes. Um, Ms. Mahan? That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, exactly. That's, and um, I just want to um, 
add on the foot of the rocks master plan, you know, that we may have a, maybe a forum, you know, for, uh, for that at some point, you know, perhaps in, in March or maybe um, in April or May, you know, so that uh, Ms. Tosky can uh, present that more fully to uh, the public, you know. So, um, although I think we will hear a little bit about this um, when PG comes to talk with us. So, um, with a motion to receive with the sending of the Mass, Mass Ave Appleton to TAC and the Magalhães Boulevard um, to discuss at a later meeting, that motion by Mr. Mrs. Mahan and a second by, by Mr. Hurd and uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Shannon spoke. Great. All right. New business. Uh, okay. Uh, I will start with um, Mrs. Ms. Meyer. No, no business. Thank you, Len. Uh, and Mr. Heim? No, no business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Feeney? No, no business. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? No, no business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Corsi? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, briefly, two, two quick items. Um, one, I, I, a couple of people, actually shoppers in the, the Heights had reached out to me with an inquiry about the, the no mm -hmm. parking for the taxi stand in front of the MBTA, um, the bus mm -hmm. depot there. And, and um, you know, the question was, how often are we looking into whether they should remain or, or be taken away? And at some point, I would like to maybe follow up with the town manager and, and um, just talk about that process. But I did want to acknowledge the inquiry because on a, on a few occasions, people have been shopping up there. Um, to, to my knowledge, anyway, that there, there aren't caps using that those spots up at the heights, and it's two or three spots that potentially may be available. But I, I want to get more information before we get back to them on that. Um, the second thing is this Friday, our town treasurer, Phyllis Marshall, will be retiring. Um, I wanted to wish her well on her retirement and thank her for her service to the town since she became treasurer in 2018. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Um, just wanted to let the board know that the 2025 committee had our first meeting last week at long last. It took some time to put the membership together, but we did meet with the five or six members that we had and decide that we have a lot of work to do. So we're going to meet very much more frequently um, coming up but it's exciting to start talking about what the events are going to be. So at some point we'll probably put an update to the board about, you know, what the efforts have been and what we're looking for. And because it will be certainly a team effort to get that done um, two short years from now. Um, but so that that's in process. Then I, wanted to i'm not sure where the most appropriate place to put this up i don't know i don't know if i ever brought up a traffic issue at the board but i was driving down by the dallin school we have a new drop off and pick up air area and it works very well out front but over behind the school i was driving today you know the conditions were a little rough but at Rhinecliff and dow ave there was a bus that couldn't make the turn and there was two buses back to back because it was cars parked on both sides of Dow Ave at right where it meets Rhinecliff. And I didn't see any signage pre preventing that. So whether it be through the town manager's office or I don't know if something, this insignificance needs to be referred to TAC. If somebody can just take a look at potentially having no parking on one side of the street, right at the tip of Rhinecliff, I think it would prevent some major traffic jams and the no parking could be limited to drop off and pick up times but i think it, in general just a straight no parking tends to work out better because sometimes in drop off pick up people think well you know i'm only there for a few minutes and but um that's something that if if the chair's discretion where that that inquiry could go to and i can give you some more information about that offline if needed 
Yeah. Uh, so the only reason I'm going to suggest that we send a tag is that I think we're dealing with something along um, Ryan, Ryan um, Croft. Is it Croft or Craft? Ryan Cliff. Ryan Cliff. Well, Ryan Cliff runs near the intersection of Appleton. Yeah. They're working on that. Um, but they certainly could. I think they could look at this and make a pretty quick decision on it. Yeah, and we, we may be fitted into a, a larger context, I mean, but not necessarily slow it down. But but um, but if you just maybe like zip me a quick email or something, then I can send it I mean, to to um, to Laura Swan, I mean, and say this is coming from from the select board, I mean, and I mean, and then she can either like tell me how it fits into what we're currently doing, or yeah. or or we generate a new ticket for lack of a better word, you know. So sure. okay. all right, we'll do. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Mahan? Sorry, I had I think Mr. Helmuth ahead of me in my head. Um, or maybe he already said no. Two things. Um, the first one, and I don't, unless the deputy town manager has something that he can apprise the board of tonight, I'll, I guess I'd put it in as a request, but I just want to, on Chestnut Street, um, where we had uh, a year ago in the spring, there was some issue with an email that got sent and then it didn't get sent and it slowed the process down. And then we got to the fall and I believe my memory is for the traffic improvements um, where the Allergen resident was killed um, down on Chestnut Street. Um, it was discussed by the previous town manager um, and perhaps the current town manager, but I, I definitely the previous town manager that um, improvements uh, had been made, some improvements had already been made and the rest because of the time delay would be made in the spring. So um, I don't expect Mr. Feeney unless he knows he can confirm any of that. If not, if um, through you to the town manager's office, just sort of a tickler reminder that are we all set for a go with the final traffic improvements that needed more time, that those will be able to happen in the spring? Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Mahan, I can definitively say that the design team is on track and we have secured via uh, a grant from the state, a portion of the funding for the work. So the design is progressing. I don't have at my fingertips exact dates or timelines for completion, but I do know that we are tracking well for this uh, upcoming construction season. Okay, and if I could just uh, make a request um, to the deputy town manager that either by March 1st or March 31st, if the board could receive information, an email or correspondence received of what is left in the construction and what are the anticipated dates that that work will start. Just so when people start asking us, um, we'll have the information. So, and, and thank you, Ms. Stefini. I had a feeling you kind of knew, but <laughs> I wanted to give you it out if you did it. And then the second thing is, and I'll have a further discussion with the chair on this, but um, I'm gonna discuss with the chair about, um, hopefully in one of the February agendas, having, um, the uh, Save the Owl Wife group, uh, Kristen Anderson, and through her, Jean Benson, who I believe is also on our redevelopment board, but not in this capacity that way, um, they, they'd like to come in um, and just discuss with the board an update. Um, Jean Benson, on behalf of Save the Owl Wife, has filed some legislation, which um, is currently in the State House and they want to explain it to the board and hopefully get our support um, for that, as well as uh, there was some nominal monies, about forty or fifty thousand, that was secured um, either as in the bond or a supplemental bond um, dedicated for the Alwife. But I believe there is the Alwife area, but I believe there is some discussion in the, in the Save the Alwife Brook, and I'm sure the town manager. Uh, discussing possibly using them closer towards Magnolia Th Thorndike, but but anyway, so I'm going to talk to the chair about hopefully an agenda item 
do no more than three speakers, three minutes each regarding the alewife, regarding their DEP submission, regarding the money that the legislative delegation got, as well as regarding the legislation that Dean Benson is the author and Save the Alewife book is filed in the State House. Uh, it has a docket number and they'd like to present it to us for our thoughts and hopefully maybe um, endorsement. So thank you. I know that was a long way to say, uh, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Chair, please remind me when I call you, why did I want to talk to you? It was that Alewife agenda item. Thank you. You, you had me at three speakers, three minutes each. And so, so and that's 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 the ticket. You know, so uh, I I am sorry. I have a a, a, a number of items. You know, we're gonna go through them quickly. Talk quickly. I'll talk fast. I'm gonna start off with the uh, the difficult one. You know, I just wanted to acknowledge what happened in L.A. You know, you know, regardless of of, of with the the shooting. You know, on um, Lunar New, New Year. I mean, and. I mean, regardless of the parties involved, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it's like the, the the stats on on the shootings in this country have just been bad. Uh, they're getting worse. I mean, uh, and and regardless of where you fall, I mean, with respect to the weapons that are being used, I mean, it's it's, it's just that I think I me mean, less in Arlington try to um, look out for each other in respect to if. You see someone that's in trouble, I mean, having a hard time. I mean, um, I mean, even if you can't be the one to help them, I mean, um, just try to look out for them in a way that can get them um, some some help. I mean, uh, and and so because um, there's some kind of anger. I mean, that's driving this. I mean, and I think if we can do anything in our community, you know, to help I me mean, minimize I me mean, that, then then um, hopefully, I mean, um, we can continue to be um, fortunate, you know, so, so there's that, you know, so everything else is going to be a lot lighter, you know, so uh, the equity audit, you know, is going to be sent to us, me, for our next meeting, uh, we can approve it, me, uh, they would like to do a longer presentation, me, to the community, me, and so I am working with them to um, do a, a forum on the 13th, that would be the Monday after our meeting on the 6th, meaning um, if three of us participate in it, it can be held as a select board meeting. You know, otherwise, maybe we can just hold it being as a forum, maybe um, sponsored by select board or something, but it won't be an official select board meeting. I mean, so right now the thinking is that we'll do it. I mean, around six thirty. And then right now it's also looking like it'll be hybrid. And so just want to flag that. But that'll be an opportunity for them to do a much longer presentation with a lot longer um, um, audience participation. Because um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. And uh, so on the six two, we uh, the town manager now is planning on doing his budget um, proposal. I mean, so we will give him a fair amount of time on that. He, and CDBG will be um, doing their presentation. That will be a fairly long one too. So there's not gonna be too much room on the agenda for much else uh, at that meeting. We have um, one other meeting on the 27th. I mean, uh, uh, so there's that, you know, and um, I, oh, I mentioned I mean, when we were talking about the overnight parking that potentially we could do a uh, forum meeting on the 15th. So I will circle back to Mr. Corsi meeting and see how he feels about that. You know? And I also mentioned when we were talking about the uh, town manager search that we might want to do our meeting in um, our interview process during that um, vacation week. I mean, and so um, let me know your thoughts about that and we'll probably maybe um, settle on some dates I mean, um, at the next meeting. Um, we, I talked with the, the vice chair on this mean, and I also town manager, we had reduced in our, um, from four positions in the select board's office to three and a half, you know, uh, uh, but we're going ahead mean, and, and filling that half is more of a half time clerk position, um, uh, with the expectation that if we do have to do more stuff with respect to overnight parking, that person can, can help, um, with that, you know, um, certainly, you know, um, TAC could use some assistance. I mean, that was even the case before we lost our senior uh, transportation planner. Uh, but I also talked with um, Ms. Meyer, and, and, and there's no shortage I mean, of work. I mean, and, and also 
Uh, we hope that my thoughts is that that person can develop more relationship with planning, meaning especially from the transportation angle. Uh, and last two items, I'd like to thank Mike Rademacher for coming to uh, East Arlington Liberal Streets um, meeting where we just learned a lot about I mean, what goes on you know, with respect to uh, transportation plans. And, and he's definitely working on creating this um, transportation improvement program, which will give uh, residents a little more insight into I mean, how projects I mean are, are progressing along I mean, and what people can expect um, will happen. And finally, it, uh, I um, was um, it, in, invited to work, talk to the Addison eighth grade students I mean, in, for their civic action um, project. It, uh, uh, it's a long history has how it happened um, for this year. Uh, but I'll just say the kids are wonderful. Uh, one of the questions from them uh, uh, was, it, um, do, um, are there articles mean uh, for affordable housing? It, uh, and and I, I just couldn't reach to the screen and hug them all. And I was just thinking, like, who are the parents and the teachers that are 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 raising these kids? I mean, and and it's us. I mean, in the context was that they were trying to determine what they could do uh, in town meeting. And I was expecting like the the sustainable stuff, the, the environment. I mean, but but the affordable housing one. I mean, it was just I was delighted uh, to 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 hear that. And so uh, it's a good community. You know that. Really Really cares and and the next generation is is amazing and just makes me want to work even more on their behalf so thank you for listening the indulgence me and um and with that i'll take a motion to adjourn move to adjourn second i'll hear a motion um mr hahn second by mr corsi mr Heim. mr heard yes mr corsi yes mr helmet yes mrs mahan yes mr davis yes Shannon, Take care, everybody. Good meeting. Bye-bye.